Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. But today, it's the March Madness special, so we have special guest, Sammy Taramina, host of OAA Now, my brother, Jordan Tysick, down over in this corner, and we got Chris Pappas right below us, former host, Sister Jean specialist, and uh, we're, we're ready to go. Here. We're all here. How you guys doing? I can't wait to get this going. Listen. Hanging in there. You know what I mean? Just hanging in there, just getting ready for... To watch the NCAA tournament, a um, special shout out to um, to um, the kids at Oakview Middle School, also the kids at Scripps Middle School and Walden Middle School for helping me put this bracket all together. Good luck, Charms. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chris, how are we doing? Doing great. I mean, the only thing that's a little disturbing is the fact that Loyola is not in this tournament, but I'll survive. I'll get through it. Listen, Sister Jean can't save you this year, Chris. I, don't, I want you to know that. It's You're right. The magic ended. You're right. But I will but say, Max, Chris, you Max do. Max Amos can. <laughs> you do have the upset. I'm going to give you a good, a good upset that you're going to get to pick this year because last year you did pick the Peacocks. So we have to give you some props. So we're going to let you have a special upset alert pick this year. I don't know who it's going to be, well, like but you better start thinking about it now. Um, before right. we get into our bracket and picking up uh, everything where, we, where we're going to go, what we're going to do, we do have to mention Michigan Wolverines. Malik, take the stage. How do you feel? NIT, here we go. Listen, I, <laughs> I, I tuned in like halfway through the first half. I, I honestly forgot they were playing. They beat Toledo. Cool. <laughs> Good for Jawan. I mean, I, I'm happy that Doug McDaniel played well. Joey Baker waited for the NIT to have a good game. So, <laughs> good for him. I'd go blue, I guess. So let's just... <laughs> I don't know. They're playing Vanderbilt, though. Yeah, the matchup <laughs> against Jerry Stackhouse should be fun. We'll see. <laughs> you can beat uh, Vanderbilt. One more thing, too, before we get into it. I want to have everybody kind of pick a team or a conference that they are watching out for before we get into the picks. Uh, let's start with Jordan. Jordan, what's a team that you really liked watching some of the conference tournaments? Um, in the conference tournaments, for me, it was I was impressed by Duke. I didn't like Duke all year until the conference tournament, and now they're showing a little bit more. So for me, I'm taking them a little bit farther, and I'm watching the rest of the ACC. Sammy, who you got as your? I'm gonna stay local. I'm gonna stay in the Big Ten. Penn State. I mean, like Penn State, the way they played in the Big Ten tournament. Of course, they had some good wins there, getting the Big Ten final, and. Um, Taking Purdue, uh, I'm almost taking Purdue out. You know what I mean? That says a lot about the confidence that Penn State has heading into the um, in the NCAA tournament. And Chris, what team are you watching out for? Uh, Memphis. I think Memphis had an amazing run in their tournament. They finished the season off hot. They're a team that I think we all got to be looking at as a team that can bust some brackets Fair later enough. on in the yeah. tournament. Malik, who did you like coming out of the tournaments? Good. So... This is a team that I've been watching all season. I've kind of been waiting for them to fall off because I couldn't fully buy in. They really don't have any superstar players. And their coach was at Texas a few years ago and he kind of disappointed for several years. But Marquette, I'm, I'm bought into them at this point. They were in a very good Big East conference and they kind of made it look easy to win in the conference. And then they won the conference tournament Shaka Smart is back to being his old self. So um, I'm in on Marquette. We'll see how far I have him going. All right. We'll see. One team I always like is Iowa State. I just I like the way they play defense. I like their offense. They're a very balanced team. I feel like I say Iowa State every year. They always – they do okay, but I always get nervous picking them. Um, so, yeah. All right, let's get right into it. We got our brackets here. We got the views from the sideline podcast bracket coming up right now and we are starting with the south region and we have alabama taking on texas a&m corpus christi so who's picking anybody corpus christi? <laughs> <laughs> not me chris no big upset chris this is you no no big upset this time i can't <laughs> no, <laughs> I the in the country and brandon miller they've been rock solid all year 
And they're, they're going to cruise past Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. It's not, yeah, it's not even a conference. Yeah. No. It's, no, I, no, no. I, no. I agree. We're going to Alabama. No qualms here. All righty. Moving on to the 8-9 seed. Maryland, West Virginia. This is an interesting one, I think. Yeah. Um, let's start with Sammy because there's a Big Ten team involved here. There is, and Maryland had a first-year coach this year and he did a really good job. Um, but I can't go against Huggy Bear, I, <laughs> even though West Virginia's had a, you know, a subpar season. But, you know, it's Bob Huggy Bear. It's Bob Huggins. I mean, like, come on. I mean, like, you got to go You gotta go Mountaineers here because of Huggy Bear. Chris, who you got? Uh, I got? I got West Virginia. Um, I, I agree with Sammy. I agree with Sammy. Can't go against them. Okay. But um, the defense hasn't been too great for West Virginia this year. It's been solid. It's been not as great as we've seen in years past. They're still scoring the ball, 76 points a game. Um, yeah, I'm going to go West Virginia. Okay. Jordan, who you got in this one? I'm going with Maryland just for the Big Ten. And West Virginia struggled on and off throughout the year, so... I'll rock with the Big Ten. Malik? I respect Bob Huggins a lot, but this this team, it, it's missing something. It's, it's not one of those classic West Virginia teams where they have a few guys that really stand out in like a shutdown defense. They they did just enough to get here, but I, I like Maryland more. I, I like their guard play. I like Mark Turgeon. I'm, I'm taking Maryland. I'm taking the eight seed. Wow, I didn't want to be a, a tiebreaker already. Listen, great way to start it. Let's great get the way to start already. it. But, uh... What are you doing? Uh, let, I think I got to go West Virginia. I, I told myself I'm not picking the Big Ten this year. They disappointed me last year. They disappointed me this year. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, I, I'm going with Coach Hugs as well. West Virginia, moving on. All right, here we go. First, super interesting matchup that we have of the tournament. San Diego State, Charleston. Charleston kind of the popular upset pick right now. Malik, these are your Aztecs. These are my Aztecs. So are you picking them, or are you going with the upset, the favorite? Listen, I have no doubts. I have zero doubts. I'm going San Diego State all the way. They had a good run near the end of the season to get into the tournament. They're a good, tough team, as usual. I don't know how far they go, but I trust them to get past Charleston. Charleston is a good team. It might be close for a good chunk of the game, but I expect San Diego State to separate near the end. Yeah. I think you're lying because <laughs> here's why. Because I'm lying. here's why. Okay. Because, I mean, I think San Diego State, you know, yeah, they're a good team, but Charleston's been there. You know, there's a – there's a reason why Charleston's a 12 seed here in the, in the tournament. You know, always what happens every year is a 12 upset to five. And Charleston's a very popular pick. They're a very good team. And I'm going to take Charleston to knock out San Diego State. Charleston has been there, but how many tournament games have they won? Mm-hmm. They've been there. <laughs> <laughs> They've been there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Malik. I'm going to pick the Aztecs. I start to get nervous when upset picks are favorite, like, Everybody wants Charleston to win. Everybody's starting to think Charleston's going to win. That's typically when they don't win. So I'm going with the Aztecs. I think San Diego State is good enough to get it done. Charleston will give them a scare, but I I think they're going to win this game. Good choice. Uh, Let's go with Jordan. You can pick next. We'll let (laughs) Chris possibly be a tiebreaker. (laughs) I would usually go the 12 over the 5, but I'm going with Joey. I think they're nice. a Vegas plant. I'm going with San Diego <laughs> Vegas State. Plant. Vegas plant. <laughs> All right, Chris, what's your take on this game anyway? Uh, I, I was going to take Charleston. First upset of the, of the tourney. <laughs> of course, I knew it. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> Charleston scores 80 points a game. They put up points. They shoot the three ball well. If you're looking for a team that's going to upset somebody, that team needs to be able to score the ball and shoot the three ball well. It gives you upset capabilities. I'm going Charleston, but I get it. I get See, it. See, that's why I didn't let you pick. I didn't let you pick before because I didn't think this was a good tiebreaker for you. We need something spicier. Listen. Oh, I already, I, I already know which one is probably my biggest upset. So we're gonna wait a minute. Chris, can I, can I tell you something, Chris? What's up? Uh, Charleston. They had a they had a real tough time with uh, UNC Wilmington 
in their conference tournament <laughs> championship. Uh, That's great. If they have a tough, if they have a tough time with Wilmington, uh, it, it might be really hard against San Diego State. I just, I just want to let you know. I just want to let you know. They're two different teams. Though. Yeah, yeah, Malik. Remember last year when everybody talked down on me because I picked the Peacocks and the Peacocks won. Um, I'm just saying. You got a good, you got a good pick. You had a, you had a good you respect run. respect for that one. Yeah, I'll give you respect. It might be another good pick, too. Okay. All right. I like well, the confidence. The bracket, we're moving San Diego State on. Now we get to the 4-13 matchup of Virginia and Furman. Anybody got a case for Furman? Nope. Oh. Okay. No, I'm Virginia. Malik's got a case for Furman. Furman was a buzzer beater away last year against Chattanooga for making the tournament. They brought everybody back. They're one of the most experienced teams in the country. They got shooting. They got experience. They, they got everything you need to make an upset in this tournament. And I think Virginia's offense just is fraudulent. They're really good sometimes, and they're just average to bad most times. And I think this can be one of those games where they take Furman lightly, and Furman just comes up and outright beats them. So I'm going Furman. 13 over 4. Virginia runs a defensive system. I mean, like, come on now. Virginia, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country. But we've, I mean, seen, we've seen them come into the tournament and take teams lightly even with mm-hmm. that defense. Hey, yeah. that was years that. ago, okay? UMBC <laughs> was long ago. This is yeah. the 16. We don't got to worry about on that. Furman's name, sir. That's true. Respect the Paladins. <laughs> but I I'm, can't make a case. I think Tony Bennett's just a good coach. Not that Furman doesn't have good coaching, but I think Tony Bennett has been there before. He's not going to let another upset happen. Uh, I have to go Virginia. Okay. Jordan, you got any thoughts on this one? Virginia's too big. They're too tall. They're too athletic. I don't know anything about Furman, but <laughs> I'm going to say I don't think they got it. Chris, you got anything to add? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, Chris. Lose Chris. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I mean, I got Virginia. I don't think – I think Furman is like what Joey talked about Charleston last time. It's that hot upset pick because of all the veterans on the team. But I'm going to go Virginia. I, I agree with Jordan. Too tall, too athletic. Furman is going to be overmatched. All righty. Moving on to the 6-11 matchup. We got Creighton taking on NC State. This one's a tough one. I think NC, State, NC State's a little bit underrated. I know Creighton – has had their streaks. They could make a run. But I think I'm going to personally go with NC State in this one. I just, I like the way they played. I know some people thought it was controversial that they made it in. I kind of agree with it a little bit, but I think they're a good enough team that they deserve to be in. Um, And I think they'll show it. Uh, Let's start with Chris on this one. Chris, what do you got in Creighton and NC State? Yeah, I'm going Creighton. Um, I think they've been solid all throughout uh, the season. Some ups and some downs, but overall, I just think they're the better team, so I'm going to rock with Creighton. All right. Sammy, I know you're high on Creighton. What do you got for us? Uh, I just think the Blue Jays, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're very streaky, but I just think that, you know, they're a team to watch in this tournament. A lot of people are really high on the Blue Jays. Um, I I think Creighton's a team that really, I think they're going to get by NC State. I mean, like, and move on to the next round. Jordan, what do you got? I think this matchup really doesn't matter because either way they're going to lose to Baylor. I do I do believe NC State is going to play with a chip on their shoulder. I do have them to upset Creighton. Nice. Malik? I like NC State. I think Tequavion Smith is a pro. I think Jarkel Joyner is a really good college player. I think DJ Burns is a really good college big. But I just don't think they have the depth to hang with Creighton. They they put everything on those three guys for the most part. And Creighton is more well-balanced. They have a good seven- to eight-man rotation. I trust Greg McDermott in this coaching matchup, and I'm taking the Blue Jays. Go with Creighton. I was very ha- I thought you were going to go NC State, but I'm very uh, – now I'm happy for you. I apologize <laughs> Listen, for everything I, I, I like NC State, but I, I can't take them. I, can't I know. I know. All right, now we got the Baylor Bears that Jordan just talked about taking on UC Santa Barbara. Jordan, what do you got on the Baylor Bears? Why do you, why do you like them? They're, they're, again, too big, too athletic. 
the small schools aren't going to be able to hang with that type of size, I think. So I think it's going to be a big blowout. Chris, what do you got on this game? I'm not Baylor. Easy. Sam? I got nothing else. It's Baylor. It's not. UC Santa Barbara doesn't stand a chance. I can't trust Baylor in this game. <laughs> we bought. Bought. Because Baylor, Baylor didn't have a good Big 12 tournament. I mean, but I'm just going to. But, you know, because it's Baylor and because of this, give me the Bears <laughs> over UC Santa Barbara. Sorry, Joey Tysic. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, since he gave it away, I am for UC Santa Barbara in this game. I think they're actually a tough matchup for Baylor. Baylor, super good guards, Flagler, Keontae. Like, that's, that's a tough matchup. But Santa Barbara has A.J. Mitchell. He's a big guard. We saw Jalen Williams a year ago do the same thing. I think they got potential. It's not like we haven't seen Baylor struggle already in the season. So I think this is a prime opportunity to see the Gauchos march on. But that's not what our bracket's going. It's fine. I think UC Santa Barbara could actually make a Sweet 16 run if they get past Baylor. Malik, what's your thoughts? Baylor. This is <laughs> ba- Baylor's taking it. All right. <laughs> Just me. Ba- Baylor has four guards that can start like anywhere in the country. That's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's fine. So good luck to the Gauchos. Good luck. Good luck to the Gauchos. Here's one of the best first round matchups in my opinion. We got Missouri taking on Utah State. What's the feeling here, Malik? I feel like it should be a good matchup, but I feel like at some point during this game, Missouri's just going to put their foot on the gas, and it could end up being like a 10- to 15-point win. They they have size. They have athleticism. But they they were the best shooting team in the SEC. Uh, the SEC wasn't a great shooting conference. But they were a very good shooting team. They would put 80 or 90 on a team like it was nothing some games. And Utah State can shoot really well, too, but I don't know if they can keep up with the pace of Missouri. So I'm, I'm taking Missouri. i got to go with them. Chris, what do you think about this matchup? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Missouri. Missouri had way more experience playing against the top teams in the country. Um, and they went six and four in those ten games. I'm I'm going Missouri. They've been a solid team all year round. Um, Utah State doesn't have much experience against the top teams in the country. Uh, they lost their two against the top twenty five teams. So I'm going to go with Missouri. Jordan, what do you got? I'm going with Missouri as well. They've been playing really well. They had a good SEC tournament. I know they didn't win obviously against Alabama, but they shot the ball real well. I think they're heating up at the right time. Sammy? I agree with everybody here. Um, the Tigers, they're gonna, they're shooting some really good. Um, the best, um, SEC, the best um, shooting team in the SEC. Give me the Tigers. Is that the first sweep for us? <sighs> no, because once again, <laughs> I'm on an island here. Oh, boy. Uh, here we go. I really like the Aggies. Call me crazy. I've said it before. I like some older teams. I like teams that shoot the three well. Utah State seems to do both of those. Um, it Again, it's going to be a good matchup. I like Missouri too, but I do really like the way that Utah shoots. If they get hot, you got to watch out. So I'm going to go with Utah State in this matchup. No clean sweeps just yet. Okay. But maybe this next one. <laughs> we have Arizona and Princeton. Anybody taking Princeton? Any love to the no. Ivy League? No, Chris, please do it. <laughs> Make an argument for Princeton. I just want to hear somebody do it. Did you watch? Try. Can't do it. <laughs> have, have you watched oh. Princeton, Chris? That Princeton offense, they got to watch out. No Princeton. No Princeton. Okay. I can't, I can't take Princeton. Can't, can't take him. Arizona, no, too good. Arizona marching on. Too good. All right. Here we go into the East region. Purdue taking on the 16 seed, either Texas Southern or Fairleigh Dickinson. That Doesn't game matter. is Doesn't on matter. tonight. Doesn't matter. Boy, they're up. Zach Eady might get like. 40 and 25 in this game. If it's going to be, yeah. If it's FDU, if it's if it's Fairfield Dickinson, their biggest player six two. I mean, that what? guy is going to have a big. I'm sure time. they have somebody bigger than six two. <laughs> their average, <laughs> their, their <laughs> average is like average. six foot two. Oh my god, that's yeah. not, <laughs> not going to be close. I kind of want to see that just for the fun of it. They start yeah. two five eight guards. 
I love oh it. my! I, I need to see it. I need it in my life. Okay, Let's give me yeah, get, <laughs> but yeah. Purdue. <laughs> yeah, till Purdue. All right, Purdue going on. Here we go. Memphis, Florida Atlantic. This, this is a good matchup. This, this good is one. a good one for sure. Memphis coming in hot off the American Conference. FAU has been hanging around the top 25 basically all season yeah. long. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, you said you were uh, a fan of Memphis. What do you think about this game? Yeah, I think Memphis is poised for a long run in the tournament. They showed why they're a bracket buster in uh, in their tournament to get in. And I'm just – I'm they're hot. Ride the hot team. I'm riding with Memphis. Jordan, who you got here? I'm riding the wave as well after they dismantled Houston. I think they'll be fine with FAU. Sammy? I'm, I'm with everybody here. Give me the Tigers. Malik, are you in – that same boat. I, I really wish FAU played against another team because <laughs> I really like them. I, I love what Dusty May has done with that program. I've never seen a coach get this much out of a school like FAU. Like it's it's a great. He's going to be a coach at a big school at some point probably. But Memphis, like everybody said, they're they're hitting their stride at the right time. And what they just did to Houston shows they have what it takes, and they have a potential. I like to call them Kimball Walker 2.0, Kendrick Davis. That man is an absolute bucket. He's unstoppable at the point guard position, honestly. He's going to average probably like 20 in the tournament. Give me Memphis. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement. I like Memphis here. Just the way they came in the in their conference tournament, it's hard to deny them. I like Florida Atlantic, but I just don't know if they can get over Memphis as they're, they're playing so well right now. Yeah. Um, Purdue better watch out, to be honest, in the next, in the next round. Do you have a point? Um, now we move on to another very interesting one. Can I start on this one? <laughs> no, yes. wanna, Malik, there is listen. There's no <laughs> there's no hotter team than Duke right now. But Oral Roberts, they did it last year. Can they do it again? I want to be us, the last one. Listen, in this. Let us know, Malik. This is this is like the this is the trendy pick right now. Max Aismas, he's a, he's a great guard. Uh, Oral Roberts honestly might have the better backcourt in this matchup. With Max A. Smith and Isaac McBride. And Connor Van over a big 7 3, almost 7 4 guy, shooting threes with a lot of touch. I can understand why people pick Oral Roberts in this one, but I think it's too obvious. I think Duke is hitting their stride at the perfect time. They're hot. Kyle Filipowski is playing great basketball. All the freshmen on their team have grown throughout the season. And Duke could be poised for a nice run. Uh, so I'm going with Duke. Straight up, going with Duke. Jordan, are you rolling with Duke as the uh, local Grayson Allen fan here in the group? As it's clear from my background, <laughs> yes. Uh, I usually would like the 12-5 again, though. Oral Roberts, the reason why they made a big splash last year is no one really knew who their players were. Um, so there's a little bit better scouting report. Again, I think it's another Vegas plant trying to get hype around the 12-5s, get experience. everyone to uh, get everyone to gamble on it. So I'm going Duke by a lot. Okay. Chris, what are we going here? Oral Roberts, and I think they win by double digits. Wow. Wow. Okay. okay. Right. Um, um, Max Amos, he is one of the best guards in the country. He averages 22 points per game, can shoot the long ball. We saw that last year for the Golden Eagles when they made their Sweet 16 push. Um, they also have a seven foot five center with over 100 blocks <laughs> this season. We're we forgetting about that. That dude's huge. Yep. Um, and they're riding a 17-game win streak into the tournament. They're hot. They have seniors. I, they shoot the three ball well. Um, this is Duke doesn't have Coach K anymore. I don't know. I, I'm going with I'm going with Oral Roberts, and I think they win big. And I think if you're a betting person, I tackle this money line like bet on the money line. I will say Chris does not have a good history with betting, so everybody just <laughs> exactly. be cautious. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do agree with you. I'm going with the Oral Roberts in this game. I liked them last year. They made a nice run. I like them this year. Jordan, you do bring up a good point that they are a team that people know about now. You can't really catch people off guard. Uh, but Max Aismas is good. He's really good. Um, they're a well-balanced team. And I don't know. I'm starting to almost get on the other side where people are starting to get too much onto Duke, of like saying that Duke is going to make some crazy run because – they look good in the ACC tournament, but ACC wasn't very good this year. So 
I don't know how much you can get out of that. I think this is just going to be a good first round matchup. Sammy, break this tie. This is a great first round matchup, to say the least. But experience, I have to go with the team from the Summit League, which <laughs> is Oral Roberts. Okay, they have experience. Went to Week 16 last year. I mean, with Duke, they're a former show themselves. Yes, they won the ACC tournament, but ORU's got experience. I mean, give me the Golden Eagles, the Summit League, rolling back in the, in the thick of things. You know, I kind of wish, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I kind of wish, you know, back from the old days of the, of the um, Summit League when Oakland was in that conference. Um, but I like That's ORU. The last time Oakland made the tournament. Yeah, I mean, like, and I know my brother was the manager at Oakland for when the last time they made the tournament. So, you know, um, but I got Oral Roberts making the dance, making one of the next round. Um, you know, but I, I, I really like what the Golden Eagles have done ever since pre um, pre um, Sutton era. You know, I like what the Eagles have done. And we got an upset. Mm -hmm. There we go. We made it. Um, here's another one that uh, people are starting to talk about: Tennessee and Louisiana. Tennessee's got some injuries. People, for some reason, starting to like the Raging Cajuns. I don't think they're good enough to take on Tennessee. I think Tennessee, even with Zakai Ziegler being out, I think they're going to be fine, at least for the first round going forward. I don't know. But they should be able to take care of Louisiana. I haven't seen much out of Louisiana that would show me that they can necessarily take out a team like Tennessee. They are good. They're in the tournament. But Tennessee is still a solid program. Just because they're missing their point guard does not mean they, they're they nothing. Um, Malik, what do you got? Uh, I, I agree with you. I, at least for the first round, Tennessee is safe. Louisiana has a good power forward in Jordan Brown. He was an all-conference guy. But I think, he, like you said, even with, without Zakai Ziegler, they've, they've got a seven-man rotation that Louisiana, I think they, they just can't mess with them. They're, they're too athletic, they're too big, and too skilled. I think Rick Barnes, yeah, Tennessee wins. I'm, I'm taking Tennessee. Tennessee, Rocky Top, too much blowout. Jordan, you got anything to add? I'll take Tennessee as well. I know nothing about Louisiana, <laughs> to be honest. The Raging Cage, you got good gumbo out here over there. Chris, you got anything for Louisiana? <laughs> gumbo. No, I'm riding with Tennessee. Um, right. They have one of the better defenses in the country. I'm going with them. Okay. Another one of my favorite first-round matchups, Kentucky and Providence. I got to start with Jordan because I know Jordan is a Providence guy normally. Are you this year? Um, I usually am Providence. I don't see him beating Kentucky here on the first game, to be honest. Um, just I only watched their tournament play this year, and I, I don't see it. I think Kentucky, again, more athletic. They're going to run with them. I don't think so. Chris, what do you got in this one? I'm going Providence. Um, I haven't been too crazy about Kentucky this year. I think they've been subpar. Uh, this is not one of their more talented rosters. And I think John Calipari just tends to fall apart around this time of year lately. Um, so I'm going with Providence. That's real interesting. You're normally an NBA kind of guy. You think Oscar Shibwe is not an NBA guy? He's an NBA guy, <laughs> but he's not, he's not top tier. He's not top 10. Okay. He's probably not yeah, top he's, 20. He's, he's solid, but, I mean, at this time, I don't think he's going to make that drastic of a difference to swing this game. Okay. Sammy, who you got in this one? You know what? I'm going to go Providence. I mean, I um, read um, Kentucky. I mean, like, the whole state of Kentucky has been just absolutely atrocious, even though there's two teams in the state of Kentucky <laughs> that are still in the, um, that are in the NCAA tournament. One to six. Give, give some respect to Northern and Kentucky. They, and they, they won the Horizon. I know. I, 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 I got to give some love to Northern Kentucky. Yeah. But, but honestly, the whole state of Kentucky has been down. I mean, like, obviously, you know, with Kentucky, it's just you can't trust them in this game. You can't trust them. Um, they've been just absolutely subpar this year. John Calipari, I can't trust him. I mean, even when he got there, when he won all the national championships, I just think, you know, the, his recruiting magic has run out of touch. Um, I got the Friars upsetting Big Blue Nation here. I think I'm going to go with Providence as well. Or Ashley Judd, too. <laughs> so I won't make Malik be the tiebreaker. UK fan. Um, but I'm going to go with Providence. I'm going to go with the Bryce Hopkins factor, playing a former team of his. You know, getting those narratives is always fun. I do think Kentucky will be better than people maybe expect. I do think Kentucky has a chance in this game. 
but I just like the way that Providence plays. I like Ed Cooley, and I think Bryce Hopkins could be the best player in this game. Malik, what's your thoughts on the game? I, I only put a little bit of thought into it, honestly. I think that's only how much was needed. Providence, I can't trust this Kentucky team. They really haven't been that good. Uh, potential future Georgetown coach Ed Cooley. We'll see what happens. <laughs> now he's at Providence. But like you said, Bryce Hopkins played like five minutes a game for Kentucky last year. Yeah. And then he went to the Big East and became one of the best players in the Big East. Calipari just wasted him. I think he's going to have a really good game against Kentucky. I like Ed, Ed Cooley as a better coach than Calipari right now. And I, I just think Providence is going to play better basketball than Kentucky. Providence all the way. Moving on to the 3-14 matchup, Kansas State taking on Montana State. Wildcats versus the Bobcats. Anybody going out on a limb and taking Montana State? No. Nope. No. Not doing it. Montana State has a good amount of talent. They have some D1, I mean not D1, but like Power 5 transfers. But I like K-State too much. I, I like love the Wildcats much. this year. Yeah. Just really, really, I like what they've done. They, one of the surprise teams, Big 12, Knocked off Kansas earlier in the year when they were number one in the country. I mean, I love what the people of Manhattan's been doing over there, over them at K State. Chris, is this an upset you would call? Yeah, I'm going Bobcats. Oh my I goodness! Think, oh, well, this, this is why you're here. This is why you're here. Guys, guys, the tournament is not chalk. The tournament right. doesn't. There's no rhyme or reason to put some Chris of these. on screen matchups. for this. <laughs> yeah. So there's no. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to any of the matchups. So. Um, this is just one that I have a feeling, you know, the Bobcats can just shock some people because nobody's expecting them. Um, yeah, I'm going Bobcats. It's just a feeling I got. It's a gut feeling. Okay. Listen, I, I like your this pick, but I'm kind of, I like your pick, this but I'm kind of peacocks. afraid of where this is going. <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to make an upset pick that's, that's going to go too far, but we'll, we'll see. It doesn't no, matter because it's not going far on our bracket. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> true. We got Kansas it's State true. moving on. Yeah. Easy peasy. All right, here we go. The MSU man. Oh, boy. He's here. We got the 7-10 matchup. Michigan State, USC. Michigan State limping into the tournament. Uh, USC part of the Pac-12. Eh. Won't be for much longer. I mean, the Big Ten. Yeah, but uh, let's, let's start with Sammy. Sammy, tell us why Michigan State is going to the Final Four. Let's hear it. They're, I don't give, see, give I don't see them going to the final four, but oh, they're not going I to think oh, I I'm, think I'm sure. Malik Hall is going to have a bounce back. He was absolutely atrocious against Ohio State. Um, you know, I remember watching that game, and I'm just like, just not in my head, just about ready to like. You, you and know, every I, MSU fan. <laughs> I'm just like throwing my clipboard <laughs> there. I mean, I know my um, my good friend, um, my good friend um, who's who's in South Carolina right now. Um, I'll bet she was really happy about Ohio State being Michigan State. I was just completely crushed and devastated. Um, but Michigan State, if they can get any sort of execution from A.J. Hogard, um, Jaden Atkins, of course, he played at Farmington. Um, I mean, like, and he was an okay player at Farmington, but, um, but they've got to get consistent shooting from their guards. I mean, like, and also Hauser's got to be play better. I mean, this whole team's got to play better if they want to make some noise in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I think they're going to get by USC. Um, I think Malik Hall's a big difference. May Sosko, the big guy inside. Um, but I think everything starts and ends with Malik Hall of Michigan State. And also it's Coach Tom Izzo. I'm, I'm really some bashing about Izzo's recruiting classes lately. And yeah, and I agree. I mean, it's been really subpar. But, you know, for Michigan State, I mean, like, remember, let's not forget, this team was a seventh seed and they went to the Final Four. So, but I like Michigan State in this matchup. I think a lot of that because of Malik Hall. Jordan, who you got here? Sparty fans don't hate me, but I don't think they should be a seven seed in this <laughs> tournament I anyway. Agree. I believe they should be like a 10 or 11. Um, I don't think they beat USC. I think USC wins. I think MSU has a lot of locker room problems, and I just don't see people playing for Tom Izzo here in this game. Chris, where are you going on this one? Um. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of both of these teams, honestly. I don't think either team is that solid. I think they're both overranked, personally. Um, so I think it's going to be a dogfight because I think these teams are evenly matched, yet overly ranked. Um, I'm going to give MSU by a nose, but I'm not confident in that pick. Malik, where are you going? 
I also think this game could be close, but I think this comes down ultimately. I think it's Tyson Walker versus Boogie Ellis. I think those two are going to be the guards that make this game go. Tyson Walker has the ability to have big games and hit big shots. But I think Boogie Ellis has just a bit more in his bag in terms of talent. I think he goes for at least 25. Drew Peterson is an overall really good guard. They have the bigs to stop MSU in the post. I'm going USC. By an edge. USC. Wait, so I'm going to tie break this? The other Michigan State man. You have, man. You have a decision to make, sir. Future Big Ten rivals coming up. Yeah, I'm supposed to be the Michigan <clears throat> State guy on this podcast, aren't I? <laughs> yes. They're making you it are. really hard. They're making it really hard. I am going to go with Michigan State in this one. I think they're just a little bit better than USC, but I am terrified that they could have the same issues that they had against Ohio State where they could not make a basket. But I'm going to go with the difference maker being Tyson Walker. I think he's the best player in this game. So I think that hopefully will be the reason that they come through. Hopefully A.J. Hoggard and Tom Izzo figure out their weird little dynamic. Um, but I don't know. It it could be another disappointing season for MSU. So I don't know. I don't take it very confidently, but I'm going with Michigan State. And that leads us to the 215 matchup Marquette and Vermont. And I'm not going to skip over this one because I think the catamounts are interesting. Does anybody want to take Vermont? I said how I feel, felt about Marquette. Marquette so. by one point. Whew. I'll be taking hey. Vermont. Jordan go with the Vermont. Catamounts. I will take. Vermont. I was thinking Vermont too. I'm not gonna lie. I think I just I'm gonna lean back towards Marquette, but I was close on Vermont. I, I want all of you to put money on these. <laughs> on what you're saying. I already out of all the conference <laughs> tournament games that I, I watched, to, to Vermont was the most passing oriented. They were the most unselfish basketball team I've probably watched all year. Um, swinging it to open man, it it was beautiful. Um, so maybe, I don't know if they have the talent to beat Marquette, but they do have so some You never magic. see 15 two upsets coming. You never see them coming. Never they, don't them. Have, they don't have the talent to beat Marquette, but I think it's going to come down to a final shot. I think, um, I think Vermont's going to have a chance to win it. Marquette's going to be up one. Vermont has a chance, and then they just miss it at the end. So I got, but Marquette barely surviving. I respect that. I'll give some more love to Vermont. Tysic kids can take Vermont. I like the Catamounts. I've picked them in my home bracket. Uh, and I will put money on them, Malik. Maybe like a dollar, but I'll put money on them. <laughs> Listen, I, I want you to put more than a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I'll put five dollars. Five dollars? Ten. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what the odds, we'll see what the odds are. No, Ten dollar bet on Vermont. But, hey, Be confident. I, I'll say it again, though. Vermont is that type of team. They shoot a lot of threes. If they get hot, Marquette struggles with that kind of stuff. Yes, they have one of the better point guards in the country, one that's a really good passer, but uh, they're not great at coming back from games, I don't think. Stats uh, don't lie here, and I'm going to be honest with you, Joey. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, Marquette's the worst rebounding team in the Big East. Yeah. That says something right and there. And they still won. And they still won the Big East tournament. Yes. They still, I mean, like, but still, I think – if Vermont gets any sort of rebounding in this game, I will tell you what, don't be surprised if Vermont upsets Marquette. Yeah. Don't surprise anybody. So we'll go with Marquette in this one, but watch out for the Catamounts. Alrighty. Then we have to swap over. Which region are we going to? Midwest or West? What are we doing? We're going over to the Midwest, actually. Mm, I like it. Let's do it. Like it. So we're starting at the top. Anybody got Northern Kentucky over Houston? Respect Northern Kentucky, but no. I respect Thanks what Northern Kentucky up, did, but, but give me Houston. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Chris, you want to you wanna go for it? Yeah, I'm rocking with Houston. <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, All righty. Moving on to the 8-9 matchup then. Iowa and Auburn. Another Big Ten team in a very contested game. Uh, I don't know where the consensus is lying right now, but uh, how are we feeling? Jordan, you're, you said you're in on the Big Ten this year. How are you feeling about yeah. this game? 
Um, I'm taking Auburn over Iowa. <laughs> so I know, I know, but yeah, I don't trust Iowa. Um, Auburn, I think the press will be too much. Uh, the guard play for Iowa is, I mean, it's good, but it's shaky. Uh, you're putting a lot of pressure on the Murray twin to score a lot. I think Auburn wins. Bruce Pearl, too much. I think that it's hard for me to trust Iowa ever since they got upset by, um, in the Big Ten tournament. They were up in the Big Ten tournament. And then, of course, they had that terrible loss in Nebraska to close out the year in the Big Ten regular season. I can't trust Fran McCaffrey's team. Yes, they did beat my beloved Michigan State Spartans. They came back and beat them. I was, I was heartbroken by that. I still got 18 phone calls from Lake Orion girls basketball coach Bob Bridges and Rochester <laughs> girls basketball coach Bill Thurston about that, about that disaster. But I'm taking Bruce Pearl, War Eagle. I'm not even, I can't trust Iowa. You can't trust them in the tournament. No. How do you can't. take them in this? Huh? No. No. I mean, they, they were better last year. They've had better teams other years, and they still just, they can't do it. Fran McCaffrey, choke artist. Chris, how do you feel about the matchup? Choke artist. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I'm, I'm going Auburn. Okay. Um, I, Iowa, you just can't trust. Yep, I will never be able to pick Iowa maybe for like four or five more seasons. Watch since Iowa win this game. I had them Watch winning the, the national game. championship last year, <laughs> um, as we all know, yeah. and uh, that didn't work out so well. So, no, sorry, Iowa, you're on my back burner for a while. <laughs> they deserve it. <laughs> yep. Here's a good run of games right here. Oof. Miami and Drake. Malik got me on the Drake hype train, yes. I don't know, a few few weeks ago, and I'm still riding it. I love Tucker DeVries after watching him. They're a well-coached team. They're another team that shoots the ball really well. Miami was a team coming into the season that we thought would be stronger. They kind of limped in uh, during the ACC tournament. They had some struggles. I'm going with Drake in this one. Malik, do you echo the Drake love? 100%. I'm going with Drake. Got the 12 over 5. Like you said, Tucker DeVries, look him up if you haven't seen him. He's, he's a coach's son. His father is the coach. And he was a four-star kid that just decided to stay home, and he's lived up to his billing at Drake. He's one of the best mid-major players and overall players in the country. Like Joey said, they're a really good shooting team. They're one of the oldest teams in the country, so they're not afraid of this. And, yeah, I, just, I trust Drake in this game. Miami is a good team, but Miami's also dealing with uh, – nor Chad Omir, that center is recovering from an injury. So who knows how healthy he'll be. So yeah, them dealing with big man issues, I'm going with Drake. Sammy, where are you going on this one? Dogs. I wrote Miami in my two brackets, okay? But you guys have convinced me. <laughs> yes, sir. Good, you guys good have man. convinced me. Good man. So That's how we get underdog picks. With apologies yeah. to my um, kids at Oakview Middle School. <laughs> I got to go Drake over Miami. Sorry, kids. Sorry. Right. Sorry, kids. Sorry. Jordan, what do you feel about this one? This is my only 12 over 5 in the whole bracket. And nice. I do have Drake over Miami as well. Nice. If it coaches kid, they shoot the ball a lot. It sounds like a Cinderella story already. Chris, how do you feel about the Bulldogs? How come I'm the one that's picking the 5 seed with the 12? <laughs> this is <laughs> weird. Um, I'm going Miami. Um, you guys have made convincing arguments. I've already put my feet in the sand. I'm just going to rock with Miami. Go with the U. Chris, don't be that guy. Why? No, why? Why you got to? No, I can respect well, I don't you. fall into peer pressure. I don't fall into peer pressure. I can, res I can respect that. I can respect that. <laughs> on upsets, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you fall into peer pressure on upsets. All right. Moving on to the other interesting matchup, in my opinion. Indiana and Kent State. I'm saying it right now. I'm going with Kent State. I think they're a high-flying offense. They had close games with very good teams. They came close to beating Gonzaga at one point. Um, and I think Indiana is a team that if they lose, in, they could lose in the first round or Indiana may, may make a big run. But I think Kent State's offense could get to them early and Indiana doesn't have the craziest shooting team, in my opinion, that could come back from that kind of thing. Yes, Trace Jackson Davis is a very good player. Um, 
but he's not the kind of guy that's going to bring you back in a game necessarily. He's going to keep that lead for Indiana. I'm going with Kent State with a big upset. Uh, Chris, are you with me? I really wanted to go Kent State. I really did, but... <sighs> I'm a huge Mike Woodson fan, NBA level head coach. He's done a great <laughs> job in Indiana. Um, I think Indiana. I think you touched on it. If they get past Kent State, there's the possibility that they do make a push, make a run. And if the bracket breaks the way you guys have it with Drake moving on, I think Indiana could beat Kent State, beat Drake, make its way to the Sweet 16. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Indiana. And I will say one more time, Kent State is another one of my Sweet 16 surprise picks. Um, <laughs> Does anybody is anybody else going with Kent State or am I alone here? Can't do it. Can't go yeah. with the golden flashes. <laughs> yeah, no. TJD, I Jesus, love too much. the action, no. but no. Yeah. Jalen no. Hutchafino also is no. he is a really good freshman point guard. Got it, really are you Jackson yeah. Davis is like yeah. Perry Ellis. He's been there for twelve years. So <laughs> yeah, they have pretty to much. Do it. Perry Ellis reference, perfect for this. Yeah. I, I love it. Fair the, enough. The immortal Perry Ellis. Yep. Indiana moving on. All right. The six and eleven matchup. Pittsburgh winning last night. In a very close game, tightly contested. We got Iowa State and Pittsburgh. Does anybody have Pittsburgh making this upset? This is one that's starting to become popular. I uh, no. I have always. Uh, I'm not I, picking Pitt, but no. honestly, they should have lost last night. The, they were close. <laughs> they were close. <laughs> they, you know, wide open three and the putback, both wide open at the rim. Um, I picked Pitt to win, but. The way they finish the game, I don't have so much confidence that they're going to beat Ohio State. So I'm going to go or Iowa State. I'm going to pick Iowa State. Yeah. Uh, I've never been a fan of Jeff Capel. I give him credit for this season, but I still don't think he's that good of a coach. He just he caught lightning in a bottle this season with some really good shooters and a nice transfer point guard in Nelly Cummings. But I think Iowa State they've they've gone through all the ups and downs of the Big Twelve, the best conference in college basketball this season. I trust Iowa State to get this done over Pitt. I trust them. Sammy, any extra thoughts on this one? No. Give me the Cyclones. <laughs> no. No thoughts. Just Give me a team from Ames. <laughs> no nice. thoughts. Just Give me a team from like Ames. That's what I like. I like Iowa State. Yes. Xavier and Kennesaw State. Anybody? Anybody? Who's Let that? me tell you something. Okay, let's hear it. Let me tell you something about Kennesaw State. Okay. I'm let's let's this hear is it. The first time they've won more than 20 games, I think, in program history. Wait, Malik, let's get you on camera. Come to the D1. Okay. To the D1. <laughs> to D1. <laughs> first time they won over 20 games. They are a high-level team. They beat Liberty, who was another really good mid-major team. They are full of really good players. They got a few guys that could be pros. Xavier is missing their best big man. Malik. Let's be careful with his <laughs> players. Careful. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going with Kennesaw, man. I'm going with Kennesaw. <laughs> Kennesaw over Xavier. Okay. Why not? We got to get spicy Wait. out here, Chris. We have to spice Wait, it up. How am I the one that's picking the, the top seeds and you're taking my spot of picking all the upsets? <laughs> I've only picked a few. I haven't gone too crazy. Yeah, let's... I haven't gone too crazy. But Kennesaw, hey, listen. Kennesaw State's crazy. Most of you are going to pick Vermont, Chris. That's a 15 over a 2. This is a 14. It's not that It's not that bad. Come on. All right. All right. I'm going Kennesaw. All right, rock with it. A surprise. I think you're crazy, Malik. You're crazy. I could be. <laughs> you're crazy. I could be a madman. You're crazy. But I'm riding with Going the, against a team that has, a, has an X on its, on its logo, my goodness. I'm riding with the Owls. So. Okay, you're riding with the Owls. I'm riding with... With the Musketeers, Xavier. Okay. Me too. Right. They're going to cross out Kennesaw State. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> We're going with Xavier as the bracket. Jordan, you don't have anything to add, do you? I have Xavier. Okay. I like Xavier a lot. I think if they did have Zach Fremantle, I could have gotten real crazy with this team. I, I probably would have taken them if they had mm -hmm. Zach Fremantle. But uh, that does hurt them. It will hurt them probably going forward. But they're a sneaky team that people forget about. Um, so I, I do think they could they could get some upsets in the tournament. Okay, moving on to the 7-10 matchup. Another super exciting game. Yeah. We got Texas A&M taking on oh, Penn State. Game. This is a game I'm watching very carefully. And why is that? Because you got two very good teams here. I like, I like what Penn State did in the Big Ten tournament. Um, getting the Big Ten final, 
Texas A&M mm-hmm. had a nice run in the SEC tournament. Um, I, I like both these teams. Both these team styles are really good. Um, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a two point game. Thirty seconds to go. Um, actually, fifteen. Se- actually, it could be a buzzer beater. Um, but I like the Aggies to knock off the Nittany Lions. I just think A&M's got a little bit too more experience. And could you just imagine if, hypothetically, if we have an A&M versus Texas matchup? I, love I mean, it. that yeah. would be so be awesome great. because both teams have the have the have the have the opponents in their fight songs. I mean, <laughs> A&M, of course, this is Texas. Texas, this is A&M. I mean, like that would be so awesome. And they're going to be in the SEC, I think, in in the future. I mean, like I'm telling you, this is going to be a hell of a game, though. I mean, but I love it. I like A&M in this game to knock off Penn State and a hell of a game. Jordan, you riding the first round? You riding the Big Ten in this one, or are you going with A&M? So this is the toughest game for me to pick because I do like both teams a lot. They're both coming in with a lot of momentum. Um, I really want to take Penn State, but I don't think they can. I will take Texas A&M. Chris, where are you going in this one? Oh, Penn State, easy. Um, I, Penn State's hot. I'm riding with a hot hand. Hot hand this time of year tends to uh, – Play out pretty well. I'm gonna rock with the Nitten Lions. All right, I'll let Malik tie break this one because I'm gonna go with Penn State as well. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm also riding the hot hand. I think Seth Lundy is a real deal. Uh, Jalen Pickett also very good. I do feel bad picking Penn State because I thought it was perfect that Julius Marble got out of Michigan State right at the right time. Texas A&M was making a good run this season, but now I have them losing to a Big Ten team it kind of feels weird but um yeah i just like the way the penn state's playing a and m just i don't know i kept thinking they were going to get over the hump and be just a little bit better and never seemed like they made it that far uh so yeah i'm sticking with penn state i'm also going with a team that's been hot but i'm going with texas a&m oh and my gosh they've been one of the best teams of the new year they've lost only two or three games Wade Taylor is one of the best point guards in the country. He was the best point guard in the SEC. They've got former MSU big Julius Marble and Duke transfer Henry Coleman at the four and five. Two really good bigs. And Buzz, Buzz Williams at coach. I think they have the coaching advantage. I think Wade Taylor is one of those point guards that can lead a run in the tournament. And I trust their bigs. I'm a Texas A&M fan right now. I'm, I'm going with the Aggies. Alrighty, so Texas A&M moving on, and then anybody got the toothpaste? Nope. I, I thought know. about it. I thought about it. You you keep calling me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were thinking about taking Colgate. But Malik, Malik, here's the difference between you and I. I <laughs> thought about it, but then I still picked Texas. You picked Kennesaw State. It's pot. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> this is the NCAA tournament, Chris. Think anything is possible. Most things are possible. But, but then you're going to – oh, my gosh. To be fair, Chris, Chris, to be fair, you did say sometimes you just got to feel it. There's no rhyme or reason you're to right, these you're things. Right. You know, you're exactly. right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Good point. Listen, so. you, you took St. Peter's last year and it worked out. No rhyme or reason, but it happened. Man, those peacocks, I was – that's my squad. <laughs> Outside of Loyola, of course. I thought Loyola was your squad because he loved Sister <laughs> Jean. He gave up on him. Oh, you gave up on Sister Jean? How could you? He, he, they let him How could you? Him. How could you give on Sister G? Holy cow. You (laughs) give on Sister G? That's awful. All right. (laughs) Moving on to the West. We got Kansas and Howard. Anybody? No. Go Jayhawks. Kansas. Rock, Chalk, Jayhawk. They're doing this. Do, 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 do. Kansas all the way. (laughs) Chris, you got anything to say about this matchup? Making a bold pick? No? Okay. Howard, Absolute o- Howard owes me 20 bucks. Chris. <laughs> Chris is having some audio issues sometimes oh, okay. being able to hear us, so mm-hmm. just be Oh, aware. yeah, no, I'm good, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Yeah, Kansas. All good. Um, eight, nine matchup, another interesting one, of course. Arkansas, Illinois. Jordan, we're going to you for the Big Ten. This is where I will be riding with the Big Ten. I think uh, the mullet man, Mitchell, Mitchell Meyer, will 
will come through as he says he's one of the greatest college defensive players of all time. I don't know if I fully agree with that, but <laughs> I, I do think a, he is a, a difference maker. A stretch. Um, I do have Illinois in this one. Chris, what do you got? Uh, I'm going with Illinois too. Uh, simple fact that nine seeds have won 11 of the last 16 games between nine eight seeds in the last four tournaments. So I'm rocking with the Illini. Sammy? I'm going I-L-L-I-N-I. Okay. I'm surprised. Malik, what are you thinking on this one? Listen, uh, I like that they have Nick Smith getting healthy. I like that they have Anthony Black. Two potential lottery picks in the next NBA draft. But Arkansas has just, they, they never came together like people expected. They were a preseason top 10 team, top two recruiting class in the country. Injuries and other things just have stopped them from coming together. Illinois also had issues early in the season, but they've slowly figured it out. And I trust them more in this matchup. I'm going to Illinois too. Yeah. <sighs> I guess I'm the only one. I'm going with Arkansas. And that's ma- basically only because of it's a, it's a spike pick. I picked Illinois as my preseason favorite, if Malik remembers correctly. Um, I really like this team. I loved the addition of Meyer to the team, Terrence Shannon. I, I like. I they, thought. I thought this team. Been better. I thought this right. team had so much potential. So at this point, I just cannot pick them anymore. I'm going with Arkansas. But in the bracket, we got Illinois. Moving on. And that leads us to another very, very contested pick St. Mary's and VCU St. Mary's is similar for me to Illinois where they were a team that I thought could have maybe taken Gonzaga out never did I mean they did in the regular season they couldn't yes, do it in the conference but not when they needed to and that's my point I love seeing VCU back in the tournament I'm going with Virginia Commonwealth do you, do you trust Brandon Johns that much I do <laughs> you sure? I'm, I, I want yeah, you to be Joe. Sure. You, you threw me off about the Brandon Johns. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He's, this version of Brandon Johns at VCU is pretty good. So I, hey, I we've him. we've been seeing Michigan basketball players succeed elsewhere. Listen, they've all left and been good. Colin Castleton in Florida. Fun. Good for them. <laughs> good times. Yeah. Uh, Chris, who do you have in this matchup? Uh, VCU. I think they have everything you look for in a Cinderella team. Um, really tough defensively. They've played really great basketball to end the season. Yeah, they struggled to take and make threes, but, um, yeah, I think VCU is well-coached, and they're everything you look for in someone that's going to make a deep run. Jordan, who are you thinking? I have the Gales. I have St. Mary's for sure. Um, they play good team basketball, uh, unselfish basketball. I think they, they just are a better basketball team, and I think they move on. I Same. like the Virg- I like VCU. I mean, like I just think I just think VCU. You know, they're playing with momentum right now. I think they're a dangerous team. Um, they're one of my sexy upset picks. Um, sexy upset. I like <laughs> I like VCU to move on. Malik, how you feel about the matchup? I feel like this is another matchup like Duke and Oral Roberts. That seems oh, too obvious. <laughs> it seems too obvious. There are certain picks every year that everybody picks. I can get and that. And it doesn't go through. And I think this is one of those. I think St. Mary's handles business. I think they they have a bad taste in their mouth after after losing to Gonzaga. They they really felt they could win the WCC, and they couldn't get over that hump. So I feel like they they're going to come out and they're just going to play great basketball against VCU. Now it might be close. It might be close in the beginning, but I'm I'm going St. Mary's. I'm going with the Gales. Hmm. What do you say, Chris? <laughs> I said, I got a bad taste in my mouth with you picking St. Mary's. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I just I pick them how I see them, Chris. That's what I do. I pick them how I see them. Well, Chris, you get the last laugh because VCU is moving on in our bracket, uh, which leads us to another Gale team. We got UConn Huskies taking on Iona, the fighting Rick Patinos. Um, anybody got Iona winning this? Listen, future St. John's head coach Rick Patino. <laughs> he will, he'll yeah. have he'll have a little bit of fun in this one, but UConn I think UConn's taking it. They're Mm-mm. they're too good. They're too good. I got Iona. Oh boy, Rick let's Pitino. hear it, Sam. Rick Pitino, coaching experience, been here before when he was at Kentucky and at Louisville. That was a long time I ago. I mean, 
I mean, like he's still looking, he's a really good coach. He's a really good coach. He's got Iona in the tournament. I mean, like I'll tell you what, somebody said anything can happen in March. True. Somebody exactly. said that on this spot on this <laughs> on this podcast. So I'm taking Iona, Rick fighting Batinos, knock off UConn. I can't trust the Huskies um, in this tournament. I mean, like. You know, like, it's kind of hard, you know, because I know UConn's women's basketball team's also in the tournament as well. I actually have UConn's women going to the national championship game, and that's without Paige Beckers. I mean, like, but I'm taking Iona to upset UConn's men. Jordan? <laughs> I got UConn. Chris, you got anything to add? I'm going UConn. I completely disagree with everything Sammy just said. <laughs> uh, Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino is out of touch with reality. He don't deserve to be oh, a head coach. Listen, anymore. why are you going so hard at Rick Pitino like that? It's like he's yeah, out of touch with reality. The, scheme, the schemes he runs are just, it's old. It's old stuff. <laughs> I, I, he's, I'm just not a fan of his coaching style. I feel like he's overhyped, and oh, all of a sudden there's this oh buzz for Rick Pitino, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. He's They're going to get smoked. <laughs> I think all he's right. lying. I like okay. the confidence. I'll be honest. <laughs> Um, we got the 6-11 matchup. TCU playing the winner of Arizona State and Nevada. Jordan, I know you were a TCU fan. Do you uh, think they're going to win? So I think it does. It will have a little bit to do with who wins the game between Arizona State and Nevada. I think Nevada will be a harder game for TCU because Nevada is a super good free throw shooting team. They're a good shooting team overall. Um, but I do like TCU regardless. They're bigger, they're more athletic, they rebound really well. Um, they probably want to be there. So I'm going to take TCU. Chris, is this an upset you would take? Uh, you know, this is a, it's a tough match. I like Arizona State and Nevada. I like both of the teams. I, I agree with Jordan that I think it kind of it matters who comes out. Um, but I think TCU is going to be the team that I rock with. Uh, if they can shoot the ball straight, that's they're a good defensive team. If they can get their threes to fall and be consistent from the perimeter, uh, they have a, they have a chance to make a decent run. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with TCU. Malik, who you got in this one? Not much thought about it. I go on TCU. I, I like Mike Miles. He's one of the better point guards in the country. He's dynamic, passing and shooting, scoring. Uh, yeah, I just I just like TCU better than both teams they would play going. The Horned Frogs. Sammy, you like the TCU? Okay. The frogs. All right. Chalking it up. Nice and easy. Anybody got Grand Canyon in the 314 matchup? Can't do it. No. <laughs> Drew Timmy is about to put up numbers on Grand Canyon. Yeah, pretty much. I agree, Malik. I agree, Malik. Yeah. Can't pick that up, so. Can't. I don't like Gonzaga, but they're moving on. Uh, mm. Northwestern and Boise State. Do we got more love for the Big Ten? I want to pick Boise State. So bad because I really like how they play as a team. I like Marcus Shaver as their point guard. Max Rice is one of the best shooters in the country. But I, I just want I'm I'm going hard overhead in this one. I just want Northwestern to win. <laughs> I, every time they're good in basketball, I want them to go as far as possible. And I'm I'm, I'm picking Northwestern, man. That boo boo is good. I, I like North, I'm picking the Wildcats. You know, I still feel bad for that little kid who was crying after <laughs> Northwestern lost a couple years ago. Listen, they're back now. He's, he's fine. They, they made it back. He'll be all right. <laughs> they made it back. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so Northwestern, yeah, people look at Northwestern and say, oh, they're terrible. They're, they're ter horrific. I mean, like one of the worst teams. We're not saying that this but year. But Coach, um, you got to give credit <laughs> what Northwestern's done. I mean, they got a really good coach, really good team. Um, got some good wins on the resume. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean. But I, I love North. I mean, I love it when there's a sea of purple in the NCAA tournament. So give me a team that wears purple, black, and white. Moving on. Jordan, you got anything to add? Uh, Northwestern's been just kind of the dark horse of the Big Ten this year, so I think they can make a little bit of noise <laughs> in the tournament. So I'll take them over Boise State. Chris, where are you going? Uh, I'm going Northwestern. I think. I mean, Boise State's got okay. five solid, five solid starters. Um, but it kind of falls off after that. Um, there, you know, there's no depth. I'm going to rock with North, Northwestern. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as Malik. Uh, just 
I, I just got this is the one time that I'll root for the Big Ten this season. Uh, I like seeing Northwestern in the tournament. I think this should be a good game, um, but I just I just want to see Northwestern move on. To be honest, I feel like we might have just jinxed Northwestern. Yeah, <laughs> I feel, I feel bad. that's but also what scares come, me. Come on, Northwestern, you can do it. You got that. You can beat Boise State. <laughs> you can beat Boise. State. I believe in you. Mm-hmm. And then we got the two fifteen UCLA versus UNC Asheville. Anybody going with the upset? Listen, I'm not going with yeah, the upset. Yeah, give me UNC Asheville. No, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Uh, I will say UNC Asheville has one of the best, most underrated players in the country. Look up Drew Pember if you don't know who he is. He's averaging over 20 <laughs> points and like 10 rebounds. He's a really good stretch four. But he, it'll be him versus the world going against UCLA. Yeah. yeah UCLA is too much. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Give me University of California of Los Angeles. Future Big Ten member. Wow, that reference. <laughs> Future Big Ten member. All righty. So we're moving on to the second round yeah. now. Mm-hmm. So I got to adjust my bracket real some quick of these, here. Some of these might be a little easy. <laughs> yeah. They could be. Yeah. They could be. They could be. But uh, we're going to start right back in the south once again. And we got Alabama taking on... West Virginia. Is anybody taking Are we going with chalk here? Bama by 30. <laughs> Bama, by, Bama by 20. By I'm, I'm going to go by 20. Bama, Bama by 20. 20. Yeah. Just to be safe. Yep. 30 <laughs> is possible. Yeah, 30 is possible. Wow. wow. No love for Coach Hugs anymore? No more love Listen, for Huggy we, we Bear. We got love for Huggy, but this this is too much. No more love for Huggy Bear. That's too much. No more love. Okay. All right. Chris, you're not picking West Virginia, right? No, Bama. Okay, just, just making sure. Just <laughs> making sure. Alabama moves on. Now we got San Diego State and Virginia. Another really interesting matchup, I would say, if this uh, comes to fruition. Malik, are you still riding with the Aztecs in this one? Oh, this is actually a tough one. This is the type of game where I think Virginia locks into who they are and they play that defense and they hit big shots. I think Kihei Clark makes a difference difference in this one. He's a really good defender. I'm going to go over with Virginia. Yeah, okay. it's tough, but I'm going with Virginia. Sam, what do you Give me what do you got? Cavs. Cavs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Chris, are you going with the Cavs as a local Cleveland guy, even though these are different Cavs? No, I'm, I mean I'm going with Virginia. <laughs> okay. Virginia's the Cavaliers. <laughs> It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just move on. It, it never so happens. we're going with Virginia. Mm-hmm. I think San Diego State does have a chance here. They're, they're similar types of teams. Yeah. It might be an ugly game. It could be. It yeah. could be a very low scoring game. It could end game. in the 50s. Maybe in the, well, maybe uh, in the 40s. No, 40s maybe. I think I'll end up picking Virginia. Jordan, would you agree with that? Yeah, like I said at the beginning of the show, I think the ACC – Though they were pretty bad during the year, I think they're better than what they've shown. So I do like Virginia over San Diego State by a decent margin. Okay. Then we got Creighton versus Baylor. I want to be the last one here if, if we go to a tiebreaker. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's start with me, since I don't have either of these teams in my bracket personally. Um, I think in this case, I think if Creighton gets out of the first round, they have a really good shot at making a run. I think they have all the pieces. Yes, they had that, what was it, six-game losing streak in the middle of the season. Um, kind of hurt them in the Big East. But I think if they get going, they can beat just about anybody. Um, you got to remember they were basically a top-10 team at one point in the season, and I think they have a chance to get back to that. So I would go with Creighton in this matchup. Malik, what do you got? I'm going with Baylor. I think Keontae George is the difference in this one. He is a NBA level scorer. This is the type of game where he goes for almost 30 and just lets everybody know who he is if they don't know him. I'm going with Baylor in this one. Their guards are just they're they're so deep in the guard rotation. Go with them. Chris, where are you feeling on this one? Uh, just echoing everything Malik just said, I'm going to go with Baylor as well. Jordan? I'll go with Creighton to upset Baylor. Okay. 
This was perfect because Sammy said he wanted to be the tiebreaker. So we set it up for you. You what guys you got? set it up don't nicely for me. Don't disappoint <laughs> us. You know what? I don't trust Baylor one bit in this tournament. Let's mm. go. I'm going Blue Jays. Blue Jays, the way they play, they shoot well, ball well. They used to be a top 10 team. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't trust Baylor one bit. So apologies to people in Waco, but <laughs> bye-bye. Give me Crichton. Sorry, Waco. <laughs> They're done. Sorry. Now we move on to the Missouri-Arizona matchup. I can't, I can't take Missouri. I can't. Yeah, no. Arizona's too good. Arizona. Take Arizona. There, there, is a, Arizona. there is a universe where Missouri <laughs> shoots like 70% from three, and they're just unconscious. But That won't matter. Yeah, I'm going Arizona. <laughs> it won't matter. Okay. Jordan, you're going Arizona too? Yeah, I think Missouri gives them a lot of problems, but yeah. Arizona's just got too much size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that leads us down to Purdue and Memphis. Can I start on this? This is going to be a good game. Go ahead, Malik. I think having Zach Eady is really good for the regular season. I think it's great for the Big Ten tournament. I think having a player that size, I don't know how good it is for the NCAA tournament. And in these types of matchups, I think Memphis just has dogs. They they have guys that are built for this moment. And for those freshman guards for Purdue, they've had a great season. They deserve all the credit in the world. But Kendrick Davis is going to give them 30. And I think Memphis's defense is going to lock in. I'm taking Memphis over Purdue. Purdue's gone. All right, Chris, I'm putting you on the spot. You said Memphis. Are they going to get past Purdue? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, again, Malik, I don't know why I agree with you twice back to back time. Listen, we're, we're but, on the same page. Great minds. Yeah, I Great mean, minds. Memphis, you said, you said it perfectly. They have some dogs. Penny Hardaway is going to have them ready to play. Um, I, again, I think having Zach Eady in the NCAA tournament, like he's a great player, but I don't know if he's great for the tournament. Like you said, Malik, I couldn't agree with you more. Memphis all the way. Oh, boy. Oh, I, I got to give Purdue some love. I, again, I'm down on the Big Ten this year. I really like the way Memphis has come into this tournament. But I like if Purdue loses this game, I may never pick the Big Ten again, to be honest. <laughs> and that's not discounting Memphis or Penny Hardaway or anything they've done. But for Purdue to get this much hype, if if Matt Painter loses this game, I, I don't know. He's going to have some explaining to do. Um, and Zach Eady's just been putting up numbers all game, all season long. Yeah. So I don't think, like, you're going to affect Zach Eady at all. It's who's going to be that other guy. How are the young guards going to do in this game? That's going to be the biggest question. Um, I think they can get it done because they've struggled in the Big Ten tournament, honestly. So I don't think we've even seen Purdue at their best, and they just won the Big Ten tournament. I do think Purdue has at least one or two more rounds in them. Uh, Jordan, what do you think about this one? I, I like Memphis. Like I said, I liked, obviously, how they blew the brakes off Houston right there at the end. Um, I'm taking Purdue, though. I think Purdue is a much better basketball team. Uh, they do need some help. They struggle finishing games, so it is going to be up to the freshman guards. I think Zach Eady actually has a big game against Memphis. I don't think he really even struggles with them. Um, so I take Purdue by a, a good margin. Wow, I'm the tiebreaker here. Yeah. Got to love Get it. Get to here. do it again. I got to do it again. <laughs> um, watch for Fletcher Lawyer. He will be a difference maker yeah. in he's, this game. He's cooled down during the second half of the season. He needs, he he needs a game like but, that. You know, he still has that Clarkson connection even when he transferred out of Clarkson. Um, so shout out to Coach Tim Wasilic and the Wolves there. Um, <laughs> giving some love to Clarkson. Um, in this game, Zach Eady too much. Um, I just think that um, I think the Boilers move on. Um, I just think because of Edie, and I think Fletcher Lawyer finds a way to to um, he finds a way in this game. He's going to have maybe at least 15, do just enough to win this game for Purdue. Yeah. And, and that, it'll be it'll be it'll be a two-point game, close. Memphis has a chance to win it, but misses shot the buzzer. Mm -hmm. And that moves us on to Oral Roberts in Tennessee. I'm gonna come out right now and just say Oral Roberts. I think Tennessee is good enough to get past Louisiana, but they are going to start to struggle not having Zakai Ziegler already at this point. 
especially against an Oral Roberts team. If this matchup happens, I feel like Oral Roberts has another Sweet 16 uh, appearance. Chris, do you agree with me? Yeah, I'm completely with you. Oral Roberts all the way. Uh, Max Amos, he's on a mission. Uh, his last tournament, I maybe they go to the Elite Eight, Joey. We don't even know. Maybe. It's possible. Maybe. If, if the bracket sets up right, I, I think they got a chance. Does anybody want to make an argument for Tennessee then, I would say? Listen, I think I think without – if they had Zakai Ziegler, I would take Tennessee. Mm-hmm. But I, I think a-, a Smith and Isaac McBride, they're so quick. They're so dynamic with the ball. They can shoot from all over the place. And them playing well gets Connor Van over more opportunities. I'm, I'm going to Oral Roberts. I'm not going to Tennessee. Nice. Another – Orange disappointment, unfortunately. Well, there should be Duke there. So Duke will be <laughs> I have Duke on my bracket. Yeah, yeah, I have Duke on my bracket. So whoever but. plays Tennessee in that next game will win. <laughs> yeah, I, not I, for the disrespect to Tennessee. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Tennessee. I think Tennessee makes it out of the first round, but I don't think they can get any farther, no matter who they face. I did pick Tennessee in my bracket. Did you? To win uh, this game? In this game, though, since you guys convinced me, um, I'm going to go Summit League and – Move the Summit League team on to the um, Sweet 16. All right. Mm-hmm. Or Roberts, making it back. I apologize to my um, <laughs> two bracket people. <laughs> All right, Providence and Kansas State. Ooh, this be a fun one. This is an interesting one. We were all kind of on Providence in the last round. Kansas State was a team Malik and I have been talking about for a while now. What's, what's the overall feeling here, Malik? Listen, uh, I trust Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson almost more than any other backcourt in the country to get it done in these types of matchups. And Providence's backcourt is pretty decent, nothing special. Bryce Hopkins has great games, but he also has games where he goes down. I'm going with K-State. I I trust their backcourt, and I trust them to move on to the Sweet 16. I got the Cats moving on. Um, I'm telling you, I love Kansas. I mean, uh, Kansas State, I mean, like, just – the way they play, the way their backcourt's very good. I mean, I absolutely love the um, what the Wildcats have done. I mean, give me the Cats. I got K-State as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris, you got anything to add to this one? I mean, you guys kind of already decided it, but I'll, just for the record, I'm going Providence. Okay. I knew he was going to Providence. I, I knew he was going to Providence. I think that Providence has a chance. I just think Kansas State – Again, Kansas State's another one of those teams, like, if they look good coming out of the first round, they're a team that could make, uh, like, their peak could be Final Four, realistically. Um, But I kind of need to see what they do in the first round. But I do think that they're just good enough to get over Providence. I think Providence will give them a hard time. Um, I maybe would pick Providence in this game, but Kansas State is moving on in our bracket. So now we get to move on. And I got to get Sammy's opinion. Michigan State, Marquette. Are you sticking with the Spartans, or do they fall in just the second round? Are you going heart or head, sir? <laughs> Which one are you going? I'm going. How objective heart. can you be? I'm going Sparty. Here's why. He went um, heart. He here went we heart. go. Here's why. He went all heart. Here's why. Marquette in the Big East is the worst rebounding team in the conference. That's your one point on Marquette. <laughs> That's your one. Two. <laughs> really good point. Do they have anybody who can match up with Cisco and Malik Hall in the interior? And coaching matchup between Tom Izzo and Shaka Smart. I trust Tom Izzo in this matchup against Shaka Smart. So if Michigan State finds consistent shooting in this game, they're going to be hard to stop. Marquette, I know they're a good team, but I just think Michigan State – you know they'll get their they'll get they'll get everybody on the same page together. Um, I think they're going to find a way to beat Marquette in this game. Who else is picking Michigan State? I can't. <laughs> I'll be on it. So I will give you one thing. I do think that AJ Hoggard could give Tyler Kolick some problems. Uh, but outside of that, like we've talked about it multiple times, I just don't think Maddie Sissoko is any good. I don't like Marquette may be bad at rebounding, but I don't know that Michigan might not make much of a difference. I don't know if Michigan State is all that good at rebounding either. Um, the problem is Michigan State turns the ball over a lot 
Marquette's good at, you know, getting out, running the ball a little bit. I, this matchup makes me nervous. If Michigan State shoots like they have in certain games, maybe like they did at the beginning of the season when they were hanging with all the They've top been one teams. Of the best teams in the country. If they can do that, they can get on a run. I just, I don't know if it's going to happen. And again, honestly, I think Michigan State has a better chance of beating Marquette than they would if it was Vermont. Call me crazy. Wow. Call me crazy. Don't, <laughs> don't elaborate on it. Just because it's Vermont. Just because it would have to. It would force Michigan State to be nervous to shoot well. In a game against Marquette, I don't think Michigan State has to necessarily shoot their their best per se. They could maybe out tough Marquette um, because Marquette doesn't scare me as much from the outside. But Vermont, if you fall behind, Michigan State is now forcing themselves to shoot more threes. And then they better be hitting because if they're not, we've seen Ohio State came out big. Michigan State couldn't, they couldn't keep up. I understand that logic. So I, I can deal with that. Uh, it just makes me a little bit nervous. Yeah. But we're going with Marquette. Sorry, Sam. Uh, you can tell us how far you'll take Michigan State in the uh, coming rounds. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving on over, going back up to the top. And we got Houston and Auburn. Anybody taking Auburn in this one? No, sir. No. I think nope. the game will be a lot closer than people think, though. Be closer, though. I, be. I agree. Yeah. Um, the hard thing to know with Houston is how long or how bad Marcus Sasser's injury is going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's going to play round one, and they should be fine. But is there re-risk of re-injuring? Um, I'm not so sure. I think Iowa or Auburn in this matchup could give Houston some problems. But I agree. I think Houston should be able to just take this one. Mm -hmm. Drake in Indiana, who I had Drake in Kent State in this one. Um, anybody think Drake can knock off Indiana? Listen, this is my Cinderella pick. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Drake. <laughs> no. Listen, you you haven't watched Tucker DeVries. You you don't know, Chris. You You have to... Do your research, sir, please. Drake, get into the Sweet 16. 12 seed, they're ready for this. They're built for this. They're the 12 seed that can get this done. Mm -mm. I'm going Drake. I will echo Malik's thoughts with Drake. I really like this team. Again, I had Kent State going to the Sweet 16 here because I figured that Indiana would struggle in the first round. If Indiana gets out of that first round, gets out of that Kent State matchup and looks good, then I'll be more confident to take them over Drake. But I think a sh good shooting team has a lot of potential to take out an Indiana team that more, more so relies on their big men and just good ball movement. Drake, I think, is one of those teams that can kind of electrify you, get up quickly, and it would just maybe scare Indiana. So I'm going to go with Drake as well. Let's go to Chris, since he was so against that pick. I mean, I was just against the pick because of Malik. But, um, <laughs> the truth comes out. Listen, this is this is we're either on completely or we're completely off. There's no in between. That's how it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, Malik, you make you you bring up great points and you back up your decision. I just I like Indiana because I like Mike Woodson. I like what he brings to that team, the leadership he provides. I think Indiana, like I said last round, they're a solid team with they're solid on both sides of the floor. Uh, I just don't think Drake has that magic that Malik sees. And that's fine, but I'm going to rock with Indiana. Let's go with Sammy. I'm going Indiana. Davis, difference maker in that game. Okay. Jordan, where are you going? You guys really make me want to take Drake. And if, obviously if they are the Cinderella take team, they will be winning. Take the Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough for me to pick against Indiana and Mike Woodson. He's got the best goatee in the game. Um, I'll go with Drake for you guys, though. Yes, the oh, upsets. Good decision. Good decision. There we I go. I don't think it matters at the end. I think Houston takes whoever. <laughs> we we got a point, but. <laughs> we got a 12 seed in the Sweet 16. Even though I like Indiana. We got Iowa State and Xavier. Two teams that I really, really enjoy watching. Um, what do you guys think on this one? Let's start with Sammy. You know, in this matchup, it's going to be a good defensive, low-scoring game. 
I mean, I mm -hmm. really expect that maybe upper 40s, um, sort of like in the high school games where they usually low high 40s, mid 50s win it. I like Xavier in this game, though. It's going to be a tight game, but I think Iowa State, it's going to be like a two or three point, two point game late. Um, by the meter chance, I just think Xavier has a, finds a way to win that game. Jordan, where are you going here? I'm going with Xavier. Okay. Just a better overall team, I think. Chris, you got any love for Iowa State? No love. Give me Xavier. <laughs> okay. Zero love. Heartless. <laughs> Heartless, absolutely. Anybody want to make a statement for Iowa State? Malik? I, I think Xavier, I think they're going to push the pace, and I think they're going to force Iowa State to do it, and Xavier is better at it. Okay. And, yeah, I, I think they're the better overall team. Uh, I trust Xavier in this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Xavier as well. Like I said, I really like Iowa State. I think either one of these teams could come out of this game. Um, I think it will be a fun matchup. should be uh, tightly contested. Iowa State plays really good defense. But I do think Xavier's got just maybe a little bit better of an offense uh, to maybe get over that. Um, so I'll go with Xavier, and uh, we'll have them moving on. Now we got the matchup that we wanted. Texas A&M taking on Texas. Who's going with Texas A&M? I, I yeah, I'm going to go with, with Texas A&M. Wow. A I'm going with the Aggies. <laughs> what? Yeah. Listen. What is wrong with you guys? I, I'm in on Texas A&M right now. This is the best rivalry in sports, though. Oh, it used boy. to be. <laughs> it's going to be because they're both going to the, yeah, go the SEC next year. They, they're both afraid to play each other. They have to now. College football, but, college football. you know what I mean? Like, but, just yeah. imagine when those two teams play again. They have, they diss each other in their fight songs. I mean, come on now. This is one of the best rivalries in, in, in college sports. I mean, I'm glad they're bringing back the rivalry, especially when Texas goes to the SEC. I mean, like, but in this game here, I just think Texas – you know what I mean? They're they're deep. They're talented. I will I mean, admit on I will admit on paper Texas is the better team. Texas it's, is the better team are. here. But in the tournament, that doesn't matter sometimes. Doesn't always matter sometimes. Just, but I, I like yeah. Texas in this one to knock off A and M. I mean, I just wish they put that Longhorn um Aggie patch on the um on the tournament floor. You know, because that'll be a very interesting matchup between the um Longhorns and the Aggies. I mean, especially because it's I would expect a lot of physical. I expect the physicality to be really up in that game, especially because these two teams just don't flat out like each other. Well, since everybody else said Texas A&M, apparently Jordan, Malik, Chris, let's give it to him, Sam. Hook them horns, baby. Horns Hook down. Them horns. Hook the horns. <laughs> Hook horns down. In the past, We're I would not singing goodbye to A&M. <laughs> We're in, not, I mean, Texas saying goodbye to A&M. We're not saying goodbye to Texas University. Horns down. We're not saying goodbye to Texas University and so Both long to the Orange and the White. No, we're not. In a normal year, I would not like to say, I usually stay away from Texas, but what I've seen them do in the Big 12 this season, hard to deny. They've beaten Kansas multiple times. A lot of people are big on Kansas, but it seems like Texas is kind of still somewhat under the radar, which just, it feels odd to me. Uh, you A and M guys, what are you guys seeing from Texas A and M that you think is going to allow them to get past Texas? Like I said, I, I would take Wade Taylor over most point guards in this tournament. He said it's going to be physical. I think it is. I think Marble and Henry Coleman balance each other out very well. And Two I don't like gonna, each other. A and M and Texas. I think they're going to give like Texas problems in the paint, and I think Buzz Williams has the coaching advantage. That's why I'm going A and M. Jordan, why you like A&M? You know, sometimes, like you were saying earlier, you just feel these things, and that's kind of what I'm going with on this one. But I watched the when they played Alabama, and they played them extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't see th I see the same game pretty much happening. I just see them correcting those mistakes that they made against Alabama. Yeah. Also, Wade Taylor is a top five free throw shooter in the country. Mm -hmm. Over 90%. You get him to the line, it's automatic. And I think in many games that will be that in the clutch. Chris, you got anything to add on AM? Um, I was gonna pick the upset no matter what. Um, I picked Penn Penn State originally. Oh, so right. it was it didn't matter if it was Penn State or Texas A and M, I was gonna rock with Tech whoever. Penn State it was. over Texas would be crazy <laughs> if that happened. But we'll see. All right, moving us to the West for our last round of thirty two. Kansas and Illinois. Anybody taking Illinois? No. No, sir. Nope. Give me Grady Dick and the Jayhawks. 
Moving on. VCU and UConn. Does Virginia Commonwealth keep moving? Yes. Yes. I don't think they make the miracle run again. I thought I'm going UConn. Well, let's let let's let Jordan be the tiebreaker because I'm going UConn as well. I think UConn is a very scary team if they get going. They're another one of those teams. Just got to make it out of the first round, and I think they can get on a, a hot streak. I mean, Sonogo's huge. Jordan Hawkins is fantastic. Um, I think they got all the pieces. They're very balanced. Um, I honestly, I'll give a little hint. I think they could beat Kansas in the next round, to be honest. Uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah, I do agree with you. I have them over VCU. I think if they get scoring, they get in a rhythm, they they are a very, very dangerous team, one of the best in the country, I think. So I think they can run with anyone. And I think if they win that first game, they just keep rolling all the way to Kansas. UConn moving forward. TCU Gonzaga. How are we feeling about Gonzaga this year? Any, anybody, uh, like, high on Gonzaga? I think they're no, not. No, because Gonzaga... Gonzaga I feel like, yes, they've had some success in the tournament, but overall, I feel like they're usually a disappointment, so I'm going with TCU. Okay. They've, they've, made, they've made it past the first round more than most teams, I think, in the past 20 years. They get to the Sweet 16, it's almost automatic most times. Mm-hmm. That's a big reason why I'm going Gonzaga. That and TCU starting center into the transfer portal yesterday. Drew Timmy is going to be unstoppable. And if they get going shooting, they can really turn it up on TCU. I'm going with Gonzaga. Sammy, what are you feeling? I've got Gonzaga. Same thing that happened. Transfer portal happens. Malik, Jordan? you can you convinced me. I'm going Gonzaga. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I swayed you. All right, we don't even have to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going Gonzaga. I don't. I, I like TCU. I think Gonzaga's down this year, but they're still good enough. Uh, Northwestern, UCLA. I want to pick Northwestern so <laughs> bad, but... It's a future Big Ten matchup. Yeah. Is, is anybody going to take Northwestern? I, I can't see, do it. I can't do it. I, 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 I want to see that little kid, you know what I mean? Let's like, <laughs> I still have dream. I still have... Insp- I still have feelings for that little kid, that little boy who was <laughs> crying, you know, after Northwestern lost in the um, second round. I mean, because I, I see it happening again, unfortunately, so... I've got UCLA moving on because because of the little kid. Yeah. I got to go with UCLA. I, they're too good. They're going to make it. We're going to get that rematch yep. that we wanted, Gonzaga and UCLA. Mm-hmm. All righty. And now we've made it to the Sweet 16. And we'll start with Alabama, Virginia. We don't need to spend much time on this one either. Does anybody anybody got Virginia? I think this will be the toughest game for Alabama in their tournament, in their run until the Final Four. But Virginia can maybe slow it down for a half, but yeah, Bama's Bama's taking it. Yeah, I got Alabama. I agree with Jordan. I think this is going to be the toughest game for Bama. Hmm. I don't agree. I think the Elite Eight might be. Yeah, I I think they might not run into trouble until Mm -hmm. a little bit later, but. I'm doing with Alabama as well. This will I'm show. taking Virginia just for the record. Okay. This will show if Alabama can play slow. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I, I I will agree with that. If Nate Oates' his team can play slow. Either way, it will be a good test for Alabama. Creighton and Arizona. Arizona. Arizona size would yeah. be too Arizona. much. Tabellus and Bello are just too much for almost every team. Yeah. Arizona size inside would be too much. I want to pick Creighton because I feel like, again, if they've gotten it this far, they're one of those teams that are dangerous. But I do agree, Arizona's size is tough to deal with. Um, Didn't these two teams play in Maui? I know they did. They played in Maui, and that was a heck of a game. It was. They played in Maui, so it's a rematch. All right, going with Arizona. Yeah. Houston and Drake. (laughs) Does Drake keep dancing, or is this where they fall? I'm sorry, Drake. This is where it ends. You, <laughs> you Malik, are to... you sure? Malik, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, listen. I, I said they were the Cinderella. Sweet 16 counts as Cinderella, too. I'm going Houston. <laughs> Houston is too tough for Drake. Drake doesn't have the talent or the... They're, they're tough, but Houston just has a different level of defensive toughness. Going Houston. 
Anybody going with Drake? Because I'm also having them fall here. Houston. You know what? I'm going to take Drake over Houston. I like, I like it. I'm going to take Drake over Houston. Okay. Put because, it in the record. Yep, because... I have Houston losing to Indiana this round, but okay. but I have um, but I have Drake moving on. Gotcha. I would say for everybody here, I think Drake would upset Houston, but <laughs> in my bracket, I have Indiana beating Houston. Nice, Xavier Texas A and M. This is a matchup I did not expect to see. <laughs> um, I have Texas here. Listen, you can you can call me crazy, Joey. You okay. can call me crazy. <laughs> I'm going with the Aggies, man. <laughs> I'm sticking with them. Okay, I'm sticking with them still. I'm going with Xavier. They're, I mean, both of, both of these teams are the type of team that I keep talking about. If they've made it this far, they got to be rolling. And I think Xavier is just a little bit better if they're rolling. Again, I already said it. If Zach Fremantle was healthy, I would have said some crazy things about this team. But he's not. I still think they're good enough to get past Texas A&M. I would go with Xavier here. Jordan, how are you feeling? Uh, I really want to take A&M because our bracket's looking very ones and twosies. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think this is where their run would end if they make it here. I don't think they could get through Xavier after beating Texas. So I'll take Xavier. All right, Chris, you get a tiebreaker. Wait a minute. What Chris, I'm Chris, I'm uh, the right decision. I know, I know you'll do it. Sammy, what are you doing then? I'm, I'm going to take A&M here because if A&M's beating Texas the right high, and then, of course, they're going to be having the um, – I know traditionally when they do the um, college football, they have one of the most unique traditions. When um, A&M scores a touchdown, they get to kiss your girlfriend. Um, <laughs> so, usually, so that one here, I'm going to take A&M because A&M would be – I think A&M would be more about testing this point. I mean, a heck of a game with Xavier in the Sweet 16. So, give me A&M. Chris, bring it home. I know, I know what you're going to do. Just do it. Let's do it. Savior. Yes. <laughs> oh, Chris, 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 man. What I like to I, hear. I thought we were. I thought we were back. Nope. I thought we were back. It's been a rough day for the two of you. Listen, I don't know where we're at, Chris. I just, I just don't know. This is, this is a lot. All right, we're moving on down. Uh, guys, I, I'm gonna be honest. Joe, can we just go to the Purdue Oral Roberts? Um, <laughs> that's where. That's where yeah. we're at. That's where we're okay. at. Um. You said at the top of the show. Take it away. I get, since I picked the Peacocks last year, I get like the upset pick. Yes. Okay. I'm picking Oral Roberts. You are crazy. All right. <laughs> Listen, Chris. You <laughs> are fra- produce frauds. There's no Listen, way. Zach, Zach Eady sees another 7 5 dude. They're hyping Connor Van over up. He's trying to eat this game. He's, he's ready. Oral Roberts. Him. Connor Van over is out there trying to shoot threes. He's, he's not trying Man. to get out of there in the paint with Zach Eady, man. Max Amos, he might drop 35 on him. Who? Who? Max Amos. It's possible, but I'm taking Purdue. Let Max Amos get off and stop everybody else. Purdue takes it for me. Sammy, how are you feeling about this one? This one. You know what, Chris? You're. I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) Fletcher lawyer. Well, well. Make a name for himself in this game against Oral Roberts. Heat up time. Um, Heat up time. They ain't going to stop Edie. Edie's going to have a big game against a 7'5 um, guy. I know Oral Roberts got experience, obviously, but Purdue plays in the Purdue plays in the Big Ten. I wish they didn't change the uniforms of theirs. I mean, like, they should go back to the old classical uniforms they used to wear there. Um, but give me the for Boilermakers. Please well, change the uniforms, Matt Painter. I'm going to put Jordan in a tiebreaker situation. I'm riding with Chris. I like the confidence. I'm riding Oral Roberts. Riding I think it's another situation. Purdue's going to have to play. They, they have young guards playing against veteran guards. I think the big man matchup is going to be super exciting. I would love for this matchup to actually happen. Uh, I think it would be a really fun game. And, again, we got to have some fun, and sometimes you just got to feel things. I think Oral Roberts makes another splash in the tournament. Jordan? I'm Break stop, the tie. I'm stopping that wave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Got you got some sense, some sense yeah, in this room. Right? I, I, can't, I, get, I can't see Oral Roberts beating Duke, but let alone Purdue. I think Purdue's too much. For playing a small school like that, Zach Eady will have 
fifty. Yeah, he'll dead. have like we're saying. Yeah, I know they have a seven foot four guy or whatever, but he's a very stretch player. Yeah. He's not a interior. Zachy be, bang Zach Eady will be out to prove a point. If I that's just, the matchup. Yeah, I just think Purdue would overpower him if, if Oral Roberts gets to this point. I don't think there would be a chance. All righty, we Chris. tried, Chris. Sorry, but Purdue no, marching on. Kansas State Marquette. This is a fun game, this I think. Is, this mm-hmm. is a really fun game. You know what? I was in on Shaka Smart and Marquette, but that 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 backcourt in Can- at, in Manhattan, Kansas. They're they're the type of guys you see in a bunch of promos going into the Elite Eight. Just highlights of them getting buckets on everybody. Just the two of them feasting in the clutch. I'm going with Kansas State. I'm riding Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. Mm-hmm. I know I had Michigan State going to the Sweet 16, but this is where I had them ending anyway against Kansas State. Kansas State, legit, real deal. Give me the cats. Any Marquette defenders? I thought it was going to be me, but I'll... I let him down. I apologize. Chris, <laughs> Chris, who do you like in this matchup? Uh, honestly, for me, I could go either way. I like Marquette. I like Kansas State. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean Marquette, but it's by a nose. Okay. Jordan, where are you going? I'm going K-State, but if Marquette makes okay. it here, that means they're obviously going to be scoring a lot, so that it would be a very close game. That's why I like this game a lot because I, I think both these teams are in similar boats where they're, again, that team, if they get going, they get on a hot streak, they can make some noise. I lean that if Kansas State does it, they're going to have a little bit higher firepower mm-hmm. than Marquette. But I do think Kansas State is a little more liable to an earlier upset. But if they made it this far, I think they're moving on. Kansas and UConn. I'm going UConn. I'm saying it now. I just think it's going to happen. I think the matchup is good. Kansas will have question marks on is McCullers going to play. He's supposed to. I think they have a lot of talent. I just think, again, UConn, if they make it here, they're going to be hot, and I think they have all the tools to be able to knock off Kansas. I, I think Kansas wins this pretty convincingly where UConn. I really do. I mean, pe- championship experience, proven experience, matters in this game. Yeah, I, I like UConn, but Kansas, man, they've, they've got everything it takes to be back-to-back champions. I think they'll be too much for UConn. They've just, they got so much firepower. i got to go Kansas. Fair enough. Jordan? Go in Kansas, too. I imagine this would be the game that Grady Dick has his coming out party in the tournament, and this is where Kansas would start to look real good. Chris, anything to add? Uh, I'm going Kansas. I don't, I'm don't. i not really convinced with UConn's play this year, to be honest with you. I thought they'd be out last round, so I'm going Kansas. Yeah, that's fair. Again, I think just if UConn had made it this far, I think they're they're ready to make some noise, but... I get all your guys' points. Gonzaga UCLA, the rematch everybody wants to see. Can I start this one? Go ahead. <laughs> I think this game is really where it will hurt UCLA not having Jalen Clark. Yep. He's one of the best defenders in the country as the two guard. He was getting better on offense as the season went on. They still have Tiger Campbell, they still have Jaime Jaquez. And Amari Bailey is one of the best freshman guards in the country, but I think not having Jalen Clark, they lose some defensive edge. And I think the deeper Gonzaga goes in this tournament, the better Drew Timmy plays. There's no magical run for UCLA this year. I'm going Gonzaga. That's where I disagree with you, Malik. Okay. I'm gonna take UCLA here. Yes, they don't have that they don't have um they don't have them, but they still got others and they got experience as well, so I think that the Bruins, you know what I mean, too much. I mean, like, I talked to one of my sixth graders um, today at lunch at, at Oakview, and um, he said, you know, I was going to pick Gonzaga first, and he said, um, he said, well, why don't you pick UCLA? You know, UCLA, you know what they're going to do. I mean, like, so 
So convince him to that sixth grade table at Oakview Middle School. I want to talk to the sixth grade. He sounds like a high level insider. <laughs> but I'm gonna to take. To but I'm gonna take UCLA just because. My conversation at sixth grade lunch table at Oak Hill. I need betting advice from these kids. <laughs> Let's, we need to get them in. Here. I'm gonna I'm gonna echo Sammy. Actually, I think UCLA. Yes, they are down, um, but I think they have the pieces to match up against Gonzaga. At some point, Gonzaga's guard play is gonna catch up to them. That's like their one downfall. We've seen it in the past where Gonzaga always has like these crazy good guards. We've seen it for years now, and this is the year that they don't really have it. They're kind of just riding the back of Drew Timmy. It didn't work last year, and they're not as good this year. I just think if you add it all up, UCLA should be the better team. Now, granted, sometimes you know better coaching and things are going to come out on top, but I just think that UCLA has a chance to get their revenge on Gonzaga. Chris? Uh, I agree with Malik. I'm going Gonzaga. I think... Uh... Jalen Carter's injury, this is where you see it. Drew Timmy, I mean, if, if they make it this far, he's probably on a roll. Uh, he's that all-American type player. Uh, I think it's just going to be too much for UCLA, who is dealing with some significant injuries. And Jordan, once again, gets to be a tiebreaker. Everyone keeps talking about experience here. Almost on every matchup we've seen, who has more experience than Mark Few and Drew Timmy in this tournament? Yeah. It's going to be Gonzaga, I think. Um, I think Drew Timmy is going to have his best tournament. Uh, he's a Christian Leitner type player. Uh, I think he has a huge game playing UCLA again. Uh, I take Gonzaga. Great analysis, sir. All right. And we're on to the Elite Eight, and since we're already down here, we might as well stay here. Purdue and Kansas State. Does Purdue keep rolling, or does Kansas State make the Big 12 look like the best conference this in the country? This is going to be tight, and I'll tell you why. It's going to be a great game. Can't, I mean, it's strength run strength. I mean, Purdue's strength is inside. Kansas State has the guards. I mean, like, I'm telling you here. Um, but in talking to my, um, talk to my sixth graders um, <laughs> at Oakview, um, I just think Zach Eady is going to be too much in this game. I mean, like, obviously, Purdue has got a um, – Mm -hmm. You know, obviously produce size. Um, if they can find, as you mentioned, the freshman guards, Fletcher Lawyer, if they can step up in this game, uh, make enough shots, because you know Kansas State's going to get theirs. Um, it's strength on strength. And I really think that Purdue, you know, with Edie inside, I mean, like, but if Edie gets in any sort of foul trouble, then I think that's going to pull some problems for Purdue. But I just think they're going to have just enough, I think, to knock off Kansas State. It'll be a heck of a game between those two teams. Jordan, where are you going here? This you is said where, you're a big fan of the Big Ten. This is where I will ride with the Big Ten. I will go with Purdue as well. Um, they struggle finishing games like I talked about. They get a little nervous, it seems like. Um, but this is where they have to prove it. So I think this is where Purdue gets it done. Chris, we going I mean, with Kansas big, State? Yeah, I'm going Kansas State. The Big Ten has not been solid all year. Uh, I don't think there's a chance that Purdue makes it this far, but if they did, I'm not taking them. I think there's a chance they make it this far, but again, we, we picked Oral Roberts, just, just so people remember, so I'm taking Kansas State here. Um, <laughs> I just think at this point, again, Kansas State has got to be at the top of their form, and you said it already, Sammy, their guard play is super good, and eventually that's going to catch up to them. We know how good Zach Eady is. Basically, unanimous player of the year. He's going to get his points. But at some point, who cares? He's just going to do it. So you might as well beat Purdue in other places. They, they've they shown that they're vulnerable in other places. Like Jordan said, they're a team that can't close out games. I think Kansas State could take advantage of that. And I would move Kansas State on to the Final Four. Malik, tiebreaker time. I'll be going back and forth nonstop this entire time. <laughs> I think if Purdue makes it this far, I think Brayden Smith is ready for this. But like, I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm gonna stick with the guards. Still, I'm gonna stick with my guys, K State, Kansas State, yeah. punching their ticket. And now we have Kansas Gonzaga, two of the top tier teams. Uh, I don't know where to go on this one. I don't have either of these teams making it. Uh, but I think at this point, I'll go with Kansas. Again, I would think that Gonzaga 
they're going to run into trouble at some point. They're just not as good of a team as we've seen them in the past. I'm going to just go on with Kansas and hope that they don't repeat. I'm going Kansas too. Uh, I think this is the point where Drew Timmy can't just win it on his own. And Kansas is strong enough to just put them away and have a convincing win against Gonzaga in this situation. I'm going Kansas. If Manhattan is going to the Final Four, I expect Lawrence, Lawrence to get really upset about this. So I expect, both, four, I expect awesome. both teams will be in the Final Four yeah. if this bracket holds up. I don't have that in my bracket, but I, if this is what we're going to go with, then I expect both the towns of Lawrence and the Manhattan be in the Final Four. Okay. Jordan, where are you going on this one? I really like Gonzaga in this. Uh, Again, I'm I'm on I'm a Drew Timmy fan, I guess you would call it now. So I would I would ride Gonzaga. Is it the play or is it the stash? Both. <laughs> the perfect both. combination. <laughs> but I do think if if Kansas is to make it this and have a big run like this, Grady Dick is going to be the player. Chris, what do you think about this game? Yeah, I'm going Kansas too. Okay. Kansas, marching on. We only got a few games left. We got Alabama and Arizona. Does Arizona have a chance at taking down the number one overall seed? Yes, big time. Yeah. Give me Alabama or give me Arizona. Yes, wow. I'm going Arizona too. I'm going. Wow. Arizona. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm I- telling you about the distractions. The distractions are still there when they don't yeah. in Alabama. I mean, like I'm telling you. You know, the distractions are still there. And, you know, it's going to be a big-time storyline. It's going to be a distraction for Alabama. Um, Arizona, no distractions at all right now. Um, their size will be too much for Alabama in this game. I'm going to take the Wildcats over the um, Crimson Tide. I think Charles Bediaco has no chance against Tubelis and Omar Balo. Mm-hmm. I, I just think there will be too much combined. And I think Kurt Creesa. He's the type of guard in March Madness that gets under people's skin. Mm-hmm. And he's going to draw some fouls. He's going to hit some big threes. Him and Courtney Ramey will hit some big shots. Brandon Miller will try his hardest, but Arizona wins. Yeah, I'm surprised, Chris. You went against the NBA guy. Why is that? He's a top five pick. Easily. Uh, I mean, Brandon Miller, he might be top two, top three. I think yeah. he's top yeah, he's, three for yeah. sure. Um, but I, I agree with... Uh, Sammy about the distractions. I think the distractions are there. They're under a microscope, and I, I just, you know, I think the, the run just fizzles out at this point with, against a good competition in Arizona. Um, I think Brandon Miller is going to be fantastic at the next level. I think he has a strong chance of even jumping Scoot Henderson of the G League and go into that number two spot in the NBA draft. But um, we'll see how that shakes out. But I'm going to rock with uh, Arizona. Okay. I'm going with Alabama in this one. I just think I, I agree with you guys. I think the distractions could be a problem. The distractions are only going to be more heavily scrutinized the farther they get in the tournament. But I think at this point, Brandon Miller has to be carrying this team. And he's just he's just the best player that's in the tournament. And I think he's going to be able, be able to rise above. Um, just getting to the Sweet 16, I think already he would have been pressured. And I think if he gets past the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, Final Four are going to start to be no problem. So I would go with Alabama in this one. Jordan, do you, are you with me? Yeah, I, I'm fully on Alabama. Um, and to rebuttal the drama stuff, after the biggest issues, Brandon Miller dropped 43. So yeah. I don't think it's really bothering Alabama, maybe the rest of the team. But if Brandon Miller goes for 30-plus on anyone, I think it's it's for Bama. I don't see it because Arizona's size would be too much, even for Brandon Miller. All righty, we got Arizona moving on. Pretty big upset, honestly, over the overall number one. Then we got Houston and Xavier. <laughs> Does Houston keep marching? Do they make it to the Houston Final Four? Yes. Right yeah. where me and Malik are sitting right now. It's Houston all the way. Yeah. <laughs> this was meant to be. It was written in the stars. If That's if we was. put Houston in the final four, they're winning. If we I mean, put is, okay. yeah, there's a there's a chance. Case. There's a chance. I don't see it. I mean, like even though I don't have neither team in the bracket, 
I just think Xavier will find a way to knock off Houston and ruin everybody's hearts. Wow. I'm Actually, with you, to. though. I like Xavier. I you just, you just want to crash the party, Sammy. That's sure. what you want. Sure. You, you want to sure. You it's fine. Bring it down, sure. It's fine. It's crash fun. <laughs> it's perfect. I like Xavier, too. Like I said, if Zach Freeman was on this team, I might have said something crazy. And I've already said some crazy stuff, but I think Xavier could get past Houston. I think at some point Houston is just – I don't know. They're they're becoming that team that just cannot get over the hump, mm-hmm. um, and they find I mean, a way they to. We made it to the final four last year. I Wait, know. Do you think Coach McCalvin Sampson? But uh, yes. okay. I need to know. I just keep thinking Xavier's going to make it. Chris, where are you going? You're the tiebreaker. Oh, Houston for sure. <laughs> Dang, we tried. <laughs> Love the confidence. All right, Love Houston them. marching on to the final four. I just think the refs won't allow them to not make the final four. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Let me resize this real quick. And we got Arizona and Kansas State. Wow, that's that's a matchup. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. I think if Arizona makes it this far, they're one of those teams that are going to be in the national title game. So yes. do I. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arizona. Again, I don't Arizona. see them winning, but if they've made it to the final four, they're going to beat Kansas State. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree. Anybody have Kansas State in this matchup? No. No. I, don't I wish I could. Don't have either team. No, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. Yes, I don't. I would take Arizona. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> you got to go theoretical. I wish it was a Kansas Kansas State Final Four. Like I, I wish awesome. they were on the same side. Yeah. But yeah. And then two number one seeds we have on the other side: Houston and Kansas. Does Houston get it done, or does Kansas make it back to the national championship game? Kansas goes back to the national championship game. This is Sorry, 50, this is fifty fifty toss up for me, but I honestly think Houston's defense is good enough to put pressure on Kansas's best players when it matters, and they make the big plays. They it won't be too low scoring, but it get in like the sixties. I'm going Houston. I'm just riding with the yeah, riding with the feel. Them being at home, hmm. it's going to be a lot of red in that arena. I'm going with Kansas in this one. I, I, their team, if, if they're in the Final Four, I think they're going to repeat as champions. I think they're more poised to lose earlier uh, rather than later. They'll get healthy. Um, Bill Self will be at his best. And uh, I would pick Kansas in this scenario. Jordan, where are you going? I told you if we put them in, I'm having them win. So I'll take Houston over Kansas. I'll go Fiesland. We know Jamma. what his final choice is. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, where are you going in this – Battle of the number ones. Chris, we're back on track. Let's do it. I'm going with Kansas. (laughs) Every time. (laughs) Every time. You got to stop asking for it. I'm I'm, I'm ruining it. I apologize, actually. That's on me. All right. That's all my fault. (laughs) Sammy. That's all on me. Sammy, you get to tie break for a spot in the national championship game. I just said Kansas is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> I just said Kansas is going to be huge. I'm, you know, I'm losing time. It's been a long, <laughs> been a long show at this point. Yeah. So we got Kansas, Arizona. At the end. Is anybody going with Arizona at this point? Yeah. I am. I am. Okay. Yeah. You guys are big fans of Arizona. Uh, I'm surprised. I'll go Kansas. Arizona size Arizona. too much. All right, let's let Chris make the final tiebreaker then. I would love that. <laughs> oh, I'm going cool. Kansas. I think, again, if they made it this far, they're at their best. No pressure, Chris. No pressure at I all. Hate, you just, I hate having a you repeat are just, champion. You are just deciding the fate of the championship in the Of the views bracket. from the sideline podcast. What do you got, Chris? What are we doing? Yeah, um, I'm very confident in this. This is actually my winner in my bracket, mm-hmm. and I think it's it's 100% going to happen. I'm going Kansas. Okay. All right. The views from the sideline, champion, back to repeat back champion. Kansas. Kansas Jayhawks. Yikes. Well, we got, you got to project <laughs> the final score, though. Yeah, what do you guys want to do the final score as? Final score. Low. 79 to 60 go. Kansas. What did you say, Chris? 79 to 68, Kansas. 79 to 68. I would have probably said maybe I'm, 56, I'm going to go. I don't think it's going to be that low. I'm going. I'm going to go 72, 64. That's what I'm going. 72, 64. Sammy, what do you think? I'm going to say 56, 52. It's going to be a little scoring. Okay. Game. Jordan, what do you think? 73, 69. I'm going nice. to go. Nice. 70 to 64. So we're going to go with 73, 68. 
Okay. Close enough. <laughs> nice close score. Well, I like it. I'm not doing my math yeah. in my head. I don't think there will be a bunch of high level defense being played. Or the, maybe they lock in in the end, but yeah. And there we go. The Kansas Jayhawks going back to the Real national self, championship. No, that logo national is scary. It is. <laughs> that logo is absolutely <laughs> scary. It is. I Bill, mean, you got to wonder what they are in football, too. I mean, Kansas had a nice bounce back year in college football. Yeah. Yep. Bill I Self agree. has three championships. Now we have to put him up with some. We have to have some conversations. He used to be in Illinois, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got to have some conversations. Oh, yeah. All righty. That was our bracket. Uh, Before we head off, I do want to hear what everybody's national champion is in their own brackets. Starting off with Chris, who do you got winning the national championship? Even though you just kind of said it, but reiterate. Yeah, Kansas. I'm going with Kansas. But in my national championship game, I have Memphis playing Kansas. Wow. That's a bold call, but that is a Chris Pappas call for sure. I like it. Jordan, where are you going? I have Alabama beating Gonzaga. Okay. um, With my final four having Duke and Houston in it as well. All righty. Sammy, where are you going with your national championship? I got Purdue and Texas. I got Texas winning the national championship. My final four is Arizona, Purdue, Texas, and UCLA. And his backup is MSU winning the national championship. <laughs> I actually, no, I do not. The actually, I do not. I actually have Michigan <laughs> State losing to Kansas State. Okay. But, I, but Texas is my champion. Hook them horns, baby. All righty. Malik, where are you going? <laughs> the champion of my bracket are the Arizona Wildcats. I have them beating Houston. I, I just I love the post play of Tubelis and Ballo. I like how gritty their guards are. And Arizona comes back to the mountaintop. It's been a while. I think Arizona is officially back. I also have Texas as my champion. They beat Alabama. I went pretty chalky. Alabama, Purdue, Texas, and Kansas Final Four. But Horns I will give you guys my one other favorite that I do have. A crazy Final Four. Baylor, yeah, Duke. The championship. Baylor, Duke, Xavier, UConn with UConn beating Baylor in the national championship. That's crazy. Wow. You heard it. like 2015, I might agree. You heard it here <laughs> first. Um, but yeah, this has been your views from the sidelines, March Madness special. Um, love that we were able to go live. Love that we were able to have Jordan, Sammy, Chris into the show. We'll have to do this again. Um, but, uh, any final thoughts from anybody? Everybody get a final thought, Chris. Yeah, I got a final thought. Okay. Thanks, Joe. I knew you did. Um, um, just, you know, I wanted to put it out there that the Pistons are going to get the number one pick. Oh, Victor was the He's ruining it. Be he's jinxed it. Right, Pistons he's, he's, here. Um, so buy your season tickets now. Uh, Kate Cunningham, Victor Wimbanyama, Jay Nivey, um, we're coming for that playing tournament. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. BT be coming back soon, so I'll be looking forward to that. Awesome. All righty, everybody, enjoy your... March Madness, however you celebrate it. I know I'll be watching basketball basically 24-7 for the next multiple weekends, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Be careful with your betting. Don't be like Chris. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say be careful, but we're going to be some degenerates for these next few weeks. Try to make good picks. Just try, at least. Don't go too crazy. Chris, don't go too crazy on the bets. (laughs) Jordan. Hey, I'm the staying conservative, man. It's March, baby. I might get a little reckless. Also, (laughs) congratulations, Chris Pappas. Going to be a brand new father soon. Happy for you, son. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. We will see everybody next time 